88 loyalist skulls in the pile. 88 loyalist skulls. Crush one to dust and drink it with blood. 87 loyalist skulls in the pile. Ah, now, the timeline has advanced a little bit further than I thought. Uh, to 1994, August 8th, 5 hours, 47 minutes, and 38 seconds. Now, now we are there. We are there. The music, we can shuffle it back here. We can do this. We can pop myself up here and say greetings and welcome. I am Karyonjo, and today we continue with Root Double Before Crime After Days Extend Edition. And oh boy, oh boy, we continue with the third root, the combined root. We finished After Days and Before Crime, and now we shall commence the current root. That's what it's called, apparently. I haven't actually checked yet. Doesn't matter. That I mean, it does matter a lot. But first, we have a few things that we, well, have to do, because that's how this thing works. Uh, so, 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 the first thing that we do is exorcise the voice and everything else. And to make sure that the, the things are doing anything they shouldn't be doing, uh, such as the noise filter that I've changed up. Hide what? I really hope it's not cutting off my voice. It tends to do that sometimes. Well, in the lower ends. Ah, it'll be fine, probably. And if not, then I'll just have to scrap this whole thing and start over at some other point in the day, which would be not ideal. I mean, the test recording was fine, so it should be fine. Always do a test recording before you actually, you know, do a thing make sure everything is a functional now uh, right so we need to escape reality reality is bullshit we know that right yes we can confirm we can all agree uh, therefore we need to uh, solicit the assistance of one mr onion dot com surname the our first name not sure how it goes but they will inform us that Nation's moms on Olympic opening ceremony, they say these very, very important things that we all need to know about and we all need to hear. Buckle the fuck up. It's going to be a wild ass ride. July 27th, 2012. Des Moines, Iowa. I think that's Iowa. Let's check. I forget. I'm not, I'm not super familiar with my things. Uh... IA is... It is Iowa. Excellent. Excellent. I have a handy dandy little tab open there for that. Uh, so, Des Moines, Iowa. Fucking French again. Continues to haunt me forever. Probably will. Never ending. Sitting down on their living room couches Friday afternoon. Friday, after running a few household errands, mothers across the nation told their children today to buckle the fuck up for the 2012 Olymp London Olympic opening ceremony, adding that the event was sure to be one hell of a wild ass ride. Hold on to your hats, motherfuckers, because you're about to get knocked on your asses by some real goddamn pageantry, said local mother Sarah Foster, 46, telling her children Daniel, 8, and Cindy, 14, that the three-hour-plus broadcast was going to feature an ever-loving shitload of colorful choreography. As soon as Greece gets out there and that parade of athletes gets sh going, she's gonna get buck wild, believe me. Hope you're ready, bitches, Foster added while folding laundry. Saying that the show would really fucking kick it up a notch after an International Olympic Committee president started introducing each na nation's representatives, mothers reportedly reminded their children that it was going to be balls to the wall with multicultural cultural pomp and splendor. From the minute those goddamn rings roll across that screen to the second some magnificent English cocksucker likes, lights up that Olympic torch. Can Christ strap in time and batten down the hatches, you sons of bitches, because these wondrous sets and props are going to blow the brain straight out of your skull. The Toledo, Ohio mother Martha Crawford to her 13-year-old son Aaron as she handed him a snack plate of carrots and hummus. You better get yourself a clean pair of underwear ready, because when those fucking flag bearers start running, you'll be creaming your jeans in no time. According to Zoe, 
to a zogby poll 43 percent of mothers said you're going to lose your shit when you see this ornate goddamn customary uh oh we have actual someone in the chat hello i am reading an onion article to exercise my voice that's what i do at the start of uh, the first thing in the week i do an exercise before i begin the main content thingy uh, uh anyway i need to conclude this it's very important to conclude things when you start something you conclude it uh anyway According to a Zogby poll, 43% of mothers said, you're going to lose your ship when you see this ornate goddamn customary, with 31% noting, I hope you luck stirring representations of English cultural history, because this shit's about to tear your ass to shreds. And the remaining 26% declaring, you think you've seen flags before, eh? Oh, you're about to see a goddamn plethora of fucking flags waving in the perfect formation, so step back, bitch. At press time, the mothers told reporters that, if you think this opening ceremony is a beast, Wait until your ass gets low at the motherfucking women's gymnastics finals. Those are... a thing? I don't know. Anyway, we have been informed of something truly invaluable and important. Now. Oh boy, now. Now it is time for probably the most incoherent thing that I'm going to try and do since I started this series. Uh, we've done the after route. Okay, no, actually, good. This is a good way to do this. The first route after days. Uh, in the shoes of Watase Kasagi, an amnesiac sort of turns out his mind, his memories were simply shattered by a uh, protagonist of the second route before crime route, Natsuiko Tenkawa here. Uh, how do we even do this? Okay. Natsuiko Tenkawa is a psychic prodigy, psychokinetic. Well, Apparently not. I've been calling them psychokinetic children this whole time, but they don't have not exhibited any psychokinesis. It's just mind powers. Telepathy, empathy, and the ability to just merge minds. This guy's developed it. And he's just kind of... Uh, and this guy, Watase, protagonist of the first one, uh, is or was a terrorist anti, you know, against telepathic, telepathic people. Um... Basically, that's toll driving for us. There was some kind of incident years ago where 118 people died because of, you know, these... They call them BCUs, Beyond Communication. Mm, and that's that. Uh, you know, basic trope of, like, us versus them, that kind of thing, and extremist of that end. Uh, but then his mind was shattered by Natsuiko, and so he didn't remember anything other than the stuff his body remembered and then just being a general person. And... As is fucking awesome. He's very competent, caring, wants to help people, and just doing his best, trying his best. Uh, and before he lost his memories, before they were shattered, he really did his best to blow up a fucking nuclear reactor, which it wasn't. Getting to that as well. Oh, this is fucking incoherent. It's got, I knew this was going to be incoherent. I'm trying to wrap my mind around 40 hours of storytelling. Um, so, there's school children, there's high schools, this is an anime plot, as always. We can expect there's always going to be school children here. Uh, Natsuko Tenkawa, he's got a classmate, Mashiro Toba, and another one, Luis Yui Sanomi, who they call, who gave, they gave her the nickname Salyu, and I hate it, and I'm never going to use it. I always mentally replace it with Luis, whenever it shows up in the text. Okay, but those three, plus Yuri who is not a real person anymore. She was a childhood friend, but then she died in an accident. But because Mr. Tenkawa here couldn't handle the trauma, he just literally rewrote his entire brain uh, to the idea that Yuri didn't die. And so that's a thing. And he's been living in this basically arrested development for the past nine years until, you know, during the before crime route, he finally came to terms and had to acknowledge that he, she is indeed... Uh, you know, no longer around. But she kind of is because this is where the fuckery happens. Because Yuri also appears in the, you know, in the after days route. Which is not explained yet. Honestly. Like, she appears to all of the adult characters in this route. And Natsuko hasn't done any kind of mental manipulation to them or anything like that. Like, like she appears 
after he's come to terms that she's dead and just kind of, you know, her illusion in his mind just disappears. So what's up with that? How is she there? Who knows? Now, another thing, there is, yes, there is the whole psychokinetic thing. It's not kinetic anymore, though. Damn it. I'll have to try and rewrite my own brain to not say that anymore. Uh, but that is basically... It's a biological thing. It's kind of a next evolutionary step. Think X-Men, if you will. Basically, you know, they got telepathy, empathy, and this, you know, third power and potentially more. Uh, during the After Days route, uh, okay, everything happens in this uh, facility called LABO, which is, stands for Laboratory of Atomic and Biological Organization. Uh, yes, it is a very big brain story time. It's... There's a lot of elements and it's confusing. And I'm not I'm not very good at recapping stories as well. So that's like not even doesn't help either. But the th was okay. Fuck, I already lost the train of thought. That's gonna happen a lot. Of, I'm sorry. Uh Labo is a laboratory of atomic and biological organization, except it's not as we discover in the after days route where they actually get to what is supposed to be the nuclear reactor at the center of a thing it's not in the middle there's like things there's like transmitters or something like that that are amplifiers they call it something whatever science doohickey doesn't matter and in the middle there's an elevator that goes even below further and we got a glimpse during the investigative parts as we ran, ran around the facility uh, to try and uh, figure out what's going on and everything else. And we discovered documents talking about uh, there being a fifth dimension or like fourth one or whatever, you know, there's space, time and the, the information. And that idea is that information can exist independently of anything else. Like they're doing research onto that, maybe like a consciousness that just, that just exists as just like a ghost, but not really, or something like that. So I suspect that's what Yuri is. She somehow... Natsuko's memories and idea of what she would be like... Uh, if she were still alive. I'm guessing that kind of manifested itself. And she became a thing that uh, other people can see and interact with. It's really weird. I'm not sure what's going on there. But... Yes, I mentioned Motase is a terrorist who set up the whole thing of like blowing up the labo and causing a nuclear meltdown. And that's how everyone got stuck in the whole facility. But he lost his memories. Well, his brain was shattered, literally. And so he became, you know, just a rescue worker. A very good one at that. Uh, I hear Ohio is not... There's lots of corn in there. Anyway, brain being shattered. Uh, yes. And he became, like, super involved in trying to help people and everything else. But, as they tried to escape, like, past Watasa, terrorist Watasa, did a really good job of making sure nobody would be able to escape uh, Labo, that when he lost the memories and did everything he could to try and escape, he obviously failed. They tried a really, really out there uh, attempt to, uh, like, get out of there through like the um the coolant system the when like you know there's water feeding in and out of the lake and like they tried going into one of the pipes and like that was really far shot like you know they got lucky to manage to get a suit that could resist the whole thing you know the heat and everything else and like and it basically didn't work and they're stuck in there and because they're still stuck in this limited area with uh this potential what they think is radiation which it's not like you know, they think everyone thinks it's a nuclear reactor type place but it's not but most of them do and so they are well, they kind of lost their minds basically lots of stuff happened everyone ended up in a very variable terrible terrible situation uh currently okay okay i'm actually gonna read what the game is telling me is happening the man who never lost heart has finally exhausted his strength. A boy, okay, that is Watase. And yeah, he never lost heart, he's trying to do his best, but like there's literally nothing else he can do. And a boy is watching him from the shadows along. Yeah, Natsuko was constantly talking to Watase to like, uh, 
follow that girl or don't follow that person or like do this or don't do that something like that using his telepathy and whatnot uh, just what happened there after the man shot the boy down before he stood up again once he decides to leave his lookout and take matters into his own hands the story will move towards its end and thus the present has arrived where is the truth okay so that doesn't really tell that much but to put it simply all of the adults are either incapacitated or have gone uh monster movie you know crazy there were watasa is unconscious he fell down after having a bout uh with uh, another person with luis oh yeah another anime trope like the 13 year old girl is super proficient in martial arts and is like can take down fully grown men unarmed basically that's a thing that's luis there uh but yeah he had a fight with her he came out on because he's just like he's basically kind of like the terminator in well at least in terrorist version of him uh super competent capable of everything else a really high spec person but then oh god i lost my track of thought again no i didn't yes girl boss although she's kind of distant like she's not very well adjusted to like she was sheltered she was brought up in france in like a mansion or something like that so she's not she is not very social, social, like, no, it's difficult, it's, it's one of those tropes, not very, like, they're all good characters, anyway, I'm losing my mind trying to recap this, it's fine, that always happens, I never had my mind to begin with, uh, so yes, Louise is just kind of, I think she's unconscious on the basement floor where the reactor was supposed to be, Natsuko and Matase are in the basement floors, way, way down below, uh, in the place that nobody knows about, the super secret research facility doing the uh, telepathy research or something like that. Uh, then, Mashiro Toba, uh, Natsuko's classmate and a very gifted tele telepath and whatnot, she is unconscious because she got shot several hours ago they tried to get some blood pack to her or something like that but there's been basically no development about that she's been just kind of bleeding out in the elevator for the past as far as i know for the past like eight hours but she's probably still alive because this plot feels like it won't one of those that's not gonna kill any characters in the correct timeline there were several false fake uh timelines indicated by these stars down here where characters died and it was quite I'm go some, although I managed to avoid most of them. I'm not really a completionist, I'm just here for the story. But yeah, not a lot of options there. And his before crime, you know, before crime was the school life and going about daily bites. Oh, there was a circle. Ah, oh, right. Ah, I just remembered. They were in high school for telepathic people, high schoolers. And most of them don't know how to send direct telepathy, so they were just shouting their thoughts into the void. And basically, if, imagine if you could not, not hear, you know, Twitter chat. Just everyone's thoughts screaming out loud, and you can't really not hear that. It was hell. I mean, they didn't represent it as bad as it could be, but my god. It could be really bad. It was pretty bad, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's basically people shouting into the void, and you have no choice but to hear it. That's... That's that's what's gonna that's what would happen if you know teenagers got the ability to send their thoughts out into the void to anyone's heads. It's a terrible idea. Absolutely awful. Uh but yeah, that was that. Their lives until they got ruined by the thing. And then yes, uh in the after days route, Watase was one of the rescue workers, but secretly a terrorist, but no longer. Then there was Jun Moribe and Kazumi Tachibana, two co-workers proper rescue workers not terrorists in any way who are just doing their best doing their jobs and everything else and there was a school teacher and a tsubakiyama uh, their teacher of the uh psycho mm, psycho i'm just gonna keep calling psychokinetic because i'm not used to that of their psychokinetic powers and a researcher named U Keita, U no ukita keiji think like that Remembering the names is really straining my brain. But yeah, total of nine characters. Plus Natsuko's mother, but she doesn't have... Uh, uh, she oh, only sometimes appears, but she's important as well. I think she might be responsible for all the things, actually. Because she's doing research things, and there's a whole plot line about her... Uh, plot elements about her husband dying 
some years ago, many years ago, before Natsuko became you know, probably aware of what happened there. And you know, he developed powers as well. And also, yeah, right, they had a plot point where after there was an accident where Natsuko and Yuri snuck into the Labo environment. Uh, and they got caught in fire, there was some kind of past bombing or something like that. As a result of which Yuri died. And Natsuko's mind basically self-broke. And so it's probable, it's my conjecture, that Natsuko's mother uh, decided to just shut her way in and keep researching things, trying to figure out what to do. She might actually try to bring Yuri into existence. She might, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's a lot of me guessing. But yes, uh, right, the four other adults. And Natsubaki and the teacher is just kind of missing. She's just wandering about the facility, don't know what happened to her. And uh, Kazumi, Jun, and Ukita, they've all gone insane from the uh, isolation and everything else. So they're just, they have each of their weapon of choice and they're roaming about like, uh, you know, you know, monsters in you know, a typical horror video game. Basically like that. And Kazumi has a you know, fire extinguisher that she's going to whack people about. Jun Moribe has a, an engine cutter, it's basically like a... Well, I mean, it's basically just a giant saw blade used for rescue work and cutting out things. And Okita has a gun with a bunch of bullets, but no magazine, so he's basically got a uh, handheld musket, effectively, running about and doing things. And yes, uh, the two main characters, Natsuko and Watas, are stuck low ground. Low below ground, even. And that's what we pick up, I suppose. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but that's where we are. There's a lot of unsolved mysteries, uh, but uh, the setup is chaos a little bit. Okay. Yeah, let's just begin. I'm just. Uh, uh, we have reset our minds. I think I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna go there. Then Jesus asked him, "What's his, what is your name? My name is Legion." All oh, right. They have some Bible quotes every now and then. Uh, yeah, well, we can keep this up. Sure. A Hupad, for we are many. The New Testament, Mark 5, 9. Sure. I've never been certain what these things are for. Yes, it's Natsuko is panting. Oh, right, the cat wants to sleep. Hey, go ahead. No? Go ahead. Yeah. He'll go sleep soon. Anyway. Uh, he just wants to change. Anyway, Natsuko is panting, running about somewhere. The blood poured in. Oh, right, Natsuko got shot many times. Uh, by what I say. Much early, man. He's been running around with those bullet wounds for like nine hours, actually, now I think about it. Damn, that's, uh, that's, that's rough. That's been rough for the kid. Uh, from his side, his left arm, his right leg, yeah, he got shot like three times. And grazed once more. Anyway, fire. I thought they extinguished all the fires. Oh, wait, no, we're back slightly in the past, before the main encounter down there. All right. Anyway, Natsuko kept running, even though he was under the whitewashed tomb. He ran to get away from that man, and to defeat him. Well, he's not going to succeed. This is like, time-wise, 746. Okay, the actual current time that I described in the recap is like 10 hours later. It's like 1740 or something like that. Anyway, we're going to bring us up to speed on what he's been doing. And at the end of this, his flight, Natsuko's feet brought him to... Big Elevator noises to a vast hall where six spires towered above him ah yes the central area n where everyone thinks it's the nuclear reactor but it's not it's this thing it's this thing and then a gunshot shrieked from behind all right still doing that's still happening natsuko fell paint burning through his left arm oh shot again so it was four times blood puddled on the floor as darkness and helplessness descended upon him so this is where you die all right, right. The last bit of the uh, uh, thing. Natsuko didn't even have the energy to respond. Okay, so this is basically what happened in the at the end of the before crime route. Eventually, the man parted with these words. After you comes the girl, meaning Mashiro, his classmate. Natsuko stood up with all his might to put an end to the man's wicked deeds. Yeah, he's getting anime strength, determination. God protect his friends. He's even doing the Goku shout. Of course he is. Uh, suddenly surprising him with 
unimaginable strength. There was but one thing Natsuko needed to do. Use his ability to destroy the man's mind. So he focused with all his mind. All his spirit. And he's going inside his brain. To shatter it entirely. Seeing all visions. Yeah. I'm a little sad we didn't actually get to see... Uh, the memories that he broke. That would have been nice to know, but oh well. I'm, I'm certain we will find out more about what does his past. Like the incident, why did he start hating them so much? Although I don't think it actually matters. It might not matter. Anyway, the man dropped his gun and screamed because his mind is literally broken. His face rapidly froze over. Yeah, he's basically been introduced to nothing. And he ran for his life. Wait. Oh, you, you are in no condition to run, Natsuko. Natsuko tried to pursue the man, but staggered. He's been shot like four times. Poor kid, leave him alone. Climbed his back against the tower and collapsed on the spot. Blood streamed out from his entire body. He could feel his mortal fa flame fading. I uh, don't think we need it to be that big. But to protect his beloved hometown and the people precious to him who lived within. So, please, work. Still trying to assault his mind even further. That's a... He must have the last of his strength to destroy every last memory that composed the man's mind. Well, every conscious memory, you know. He wasn't able to destroy his memory of how to speak Japanese or like basic concepts and common sense. I guess that's very... that becomes hardwired as you age, probably. And as the man fell, Natsuiko's consciousness rapidly faded away and eventually far past that frozen time awake a voice called to him or perhaps it was merely a memory of such a voice he heard that voice as he lay beneath the whitewashed tomb and then time began to move oh. all right we are advancing to a point where i know nothing about this anymore well relatively speaking format order 916 that's where the story began there for the after days his consciousness was in an endless darkness it felt like a world shut off from everything. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, taste. He had been disconnected from all his senses. All right. When like a psychokinetic user disconnects from his senses, that's when his uh, psychokinesis becomes most potent. So he might actually become disembodied. Well, that, that actually makes sense. Yeah, right. He's been running around psychically. as a psychic ghost telling what to ask what to do and everything else. It didn't feel like there was a world around him for him to experience at all. What? He had no idea what was going on. He couldn't even tell if he was dead or alive. What in the world am I? Ripples of a bewilderment spread across the calm sea of nihil nihility. And then, this is. His memory suddenly returned. He remembered who he was, where he was, what he was doing, what he had gotten himself into. That's right, I'm Natsuko Tenko. Also, he lost sense of self for a brief moment. He remembered that he, an ordinary high school student, had caught wind of a terrorist attack and went to Labo to prevent it. Ah, they're giving a proper recap. We can compare the incoherence that I gave with uh, what the game is actually giving me. And finally, he remembered that he got shot by a terrorist. Then, am I really dead after all? No, 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 no you're not. I can feel something pulsing. Wouldn't be a story if you died. He certainly could feel a beat. A heartbeat. He had his senses of vision, hearing, touch, smell, taste, and pain. Yeah, could do without the last one bit. Well, you kind of need to feel pain, otherwise, you know, you're not really going to be able to live properly. Because, you know, pain tells you where things are wrong and to fix them. Anyway, both his body and conscience were here. I'm still alive. Congratulations. Yes, you are. Captain, all right, we're going with the other one. Captain, please hang in there, Captain. And this is the other, Watase. Get up, Captain. Come on. And the two other whiskey workers telling him, roused awake by those voices, Natsuko opened his eyes. Oh. 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 He's inside Watase's mind. Oh. That's what happened. Oh. Curious. Ah, you finally come too, haven't you? What a relief. I thought you bit it there for a sec. Okay, that's <laughs> okay. I wasn't expecting that kind of uh, thing, but that's neat. Before his eyes were two female rescue workers, one of whom he recognized. Jun, that's the green-haired one. 
He tried to say her name, but for some reason, his lips seemed to be paralyzed because they're not your lips, dude. He had his senses, yet it felt as if his nerves weren't connected properly to his body. It was a strange sensation. What? Well, what's going on? <laughs> as soon as Natsuko questioned the situation, who, uh, no, where am I? His mouth moved on its own, and his body even got up in spite of Natsuko's intention. Oh, I love this. Natsuko was bewildered at the sight. Yeah. First time being inside someone else's mind. Or he was in a clearly different place than where he had passed out. Hmm. An agonized voice suddenly came out of his body, which once again collapsed in the passageway. What's happening? He felt the sensation of a headache, yet he did not feel like what was happening was real. Oh. Oh. I think I, oh, that's what happened. Oh, okay, so there was, there is this, uh, what they call anti-radiation drug, which I called bullshit on the moment, first time I heard it, which is actually called Alone Desire, which they haven't explained exactly what it does, but basically cancels out all of these psychokinetic things. And the scientists here regularly take it to make sure they don't, you know, overexpose themselves to something called WX particles, which are things that those machines in the center thing do or whatever uh, trying to create manifest a psychic god or something that's what i'm guessing and, and look I'm, it's an anime plot i'm assuming there's going to be some kind of a uh, god complex somewhere around there but yeah they take it and that's why natsuko get, can't actually communicate to watas's mind it gets like alone desire like, like it shuts off the mind the conscious the mind in control of the body away from whatever psychic manipulations other people want to do to that i think that's basically how it works based on how i've seen it work after injecting it or not they haven't explained anyway he felt the sensation of a headache yet he did not feel like what was happening was real are you okay are you in pain yes he is no i'm fine oh natsuko is what i say is not he's a healthy man his mouth moved on its own again and then his arms suddenly came into view huh why am i in a rescue worker outfit Oh, I hope it doesn't take too long for him to realize what's happening, because that can get a little annoying. His body disregarded Natsuko's confusion and, not, and got up by leaning his arm against the wall. Why, was, why has my body been moving on so? Understand. You're, you're not that stupid. Is someone controlling me? Uh, but right when Natsuko considered that suspicion... Oh, more explosions, right. Oh god, he was a bit of a classic... Uh, knucklehead anime protagonist as well ah uh, they're always quite dense aren't they yes they are but right when natsuko considered that suspicion he heard an explosion another explosion yes there's gonna be a few more maybe a fire's broken up let's go lieutenant all right captain please rest here we'll handle this one by ourselves yeah they will they're competent and with that the two rescue workers ran off okay so oh wait actually so oh okay Okay, so Natsuko is constantly inside his mind. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, we'll just have to get to the bit where Yuri appears for the first time. What's that? Uh, uh, they're saying I'm a rescue squad captain. In spite of Natsuko's bewilderment, his body moved on its own to follow the two women. Way up, you guys. He just now realized he hadn't heard that he had heard that voice before. It was the voice of the terrorist who had shot him and Mashiro. Huh? Then that means, this is that man's body? Hey, he finally realized. Good, it didn't take him too long. And there's a fire and everything else. Area 1B2, outer ring was engulfed in hellfire. Yes. Fire. In spite of Natsuko's will, his body just stood there, dumbfounded. That's gotta be it. I must be in that man's body right now. He didn't know why he was inside him, but he knew that he was. That was when the man's ears picked up a faint voice. Help me, it's Yuri's voice. Somehow, someone's in that room. Oh, Natsuko, let go of that hallucination, though. Then they need to be saved. All right, as Natsuko came across that thought, the man dashed through a gap in the flames and discovered a world of fire and smoke. Someone help me. And there's Yuri, the girl who's supposed to not even be alive at all. Yet she's there. The man's eyes froze in place, and through the smoke he saw... Mm -hmm. Yuri, what's Yuri doing in a place like this? Why is she? Am I hallucinating again? It's a very good question. I hope they answer that properly. But right as Natsuko had that thought, the girl's face froze over. 
So the question is, who does she see? Because Yuri... Oh. Ah, that's con ah, I'm confused by this. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to go through this to understand. And then someone else's thoughts are ran through Natsuka's consciousness. What's with that look? Oh yeah, Natsuka hears his voice. His thoughts. Well, what's with that voice? It sounded like telepathy. No, you're sharing a brain. Come on. Before he realized, that the man's feet had stopped in their tracks. Could that voice have been what he was just thinking right now? Yeah. If he's cognizant of her, then does that mean she's not a phantom? Shit, then we gotta save you again, quick. Okay, so Natsuko has no idea what she is then. Okay. Uh, Alright. That question will have to remain unanswered for a while. He could see the flames encroaching closer and closer to Yuri's body. If I can hear his voice, then I'm sure as hell that I, he can hear mine. Natsuko focused hard in the same way he would when he used telepathy. Don't stop. Save her. Go, save her. A man's a 16-year-old boy to like a 35-year-old man. Natsuko's voice echoed in the man's head, and with that command giving him the final push he needed, the man lunged into the blazing flames. Yeah. Eight hours until lockdown is lifted. Well, that... Hmm. Oh yeah, lockdown. Oh yeah, they're trying. Anyway. Ah, that's not good. relevant for a while. Anyway, the fire was masterfully extinguished through the skillful efforts of the two rescue workers. Don't worry, miss. You're safe now. And they can see her as well, right? That's the thing. That's really, that's the most confusing part. They can see her. Are you hurt? No. Natsuko looked down long and hard the girl through the man's eyes. Is that really Yuri? It is and it isn't. That's very confusing. Because she's actually dead nine years ago. So this is the idea of Yuri that he has, but it manifested somehow. But Yuri was supposed to have died nine years ago. Yeah. Yuri didn't have a twin sister by any chance, did she? Come on now. <laughs> no, I could have sworn Yuri was an only child. So could she be her clone or something then? Uh... She was such a spitting image of Yuri that he couldn't help but ponder such absurd impossibilities. At that time, the man's eyes turned toward the two rescue workers. By the way, can I ask you guys a question? You've been calling me Captain, so does that mean I'm the captain of a rescue squad or something? Ah? The heck you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, the thing is, I don't know anything. Yeah, his brain was shattered a few minutes ago, or like an hour and a half ago. Not who I am, or even where I am. Yet I can speak fluent Japanese. Everyone's shocked. Everyone on the outside was shocked by the man's confession, but Natsuko was rather relieved. Thank goodness, I successfully destroyed the man's mind. I'm not sure that's something you should be proud of. Honestly, that's a terrifying thing to say and do. I mean, he had good reason at the moment, but still, that's uh, questionable. That's a good thing. Natsuko recalled what had happened back then. Show me all the memories that compose his mind. Please work. Can we see? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I want to see one of those memories, though. Yes, yes, yes. We just had that, though. That was Natsuko's memory of just before he had lost consciousness. It was more accurate to say that he had destroyed the man's memories rather than his mind. As a result, the man appeared to be suffering from amnesia. Well, then did his hatred and murderous intent disappear too? Actually it did. Congratulations. He had no evidence that said that, said that much, but all signs of the man's demeanor suggested that Natsuko could relax for now. But... Natsuko grew depressed as he recalled the details of his own loss of consciousness. His blood loss, his senses fading into darkness. He was by no means okay. Yeah, his physical body is in a very, very bad state. Well, it's no wonder, with that many gunshot wounds, anybody would be in a really, really bad state. Anybody would die like I did back there, but you're not dead. The fact, that fact cast a dark shadow on Natsuhiko's mind. But then what am I now, you're a psychokinetic ghost? Haunting another man's mind. Don't tell me I'm a ghost. Yeah, why not? As that possibility crossed his mind, he recalled a story he had heard just the other day. In an extreme example, some people are even considering the possibility that ghosts just might be another type of BC. BC energy created by telepathy starts decaying after it's sent, but it's not like it fades to zero immediately. Oh yeah, this is Enetsubakian, their teacher, about the psychokinetic stuff. 
So in other words, with or without a target, extraordinarily strong BC can remain in place for a while. That also means that the feelings of the dead that remain in this world, doesn't it? Ghosts and hauntings and all that. And that's Mashiro. A nice kid. Also a bit of a tomboy. Uh, but anyway. Natsuko likely died while he was still inside the man's mind. Apparently not though. But it's gonna take like 9 hours to discover that. And thus the BC energy Natsuko used was still lingering inside the man. So my consciousness isn't here now, eh? Who would have thought that I personally experienced a hypothetical we discussed in class? It's almost like I've become an impure spirit haunting the one who killed me. Mm, sure. But not really. That's not what's happening around. Not really. It was unbearably sad that he would no longer be able to see Mashiro, Luis, or even his own mother again. Yeah, I'm gonna, like, he can just replace that word with Luis constantly. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna acknowledge it. I hate it. I don't know why, but I hate the word that one. It's Luis. She has a proper name. Don't give me that one. At that moment, Natsuko suddenly noticed that the lieutenant was trying to inject the girl with something. Please hold out your arm. Man, she, they can physically interact with her. Which doesn't make sense. Oh man, that's so weird. No, I don't want that shot. It's the anti-radiation drug that's not actually that. It blots your mind. Oh, actually, no. What's gonna happen here? I wanna see that. You can't be like that. You'll be in grave danger without it. Uh, the lieutenant forcefully injected the girl. What's that drug? It's called AD. Put in simple terms, it's an anti-radiation drug, which is complete bullshit. It's not what it is. At all. Nonsense. Anti-radiation drugs. According to the lieutenant's explanation, uh, AD was a drug provided by Labo that would serve as protection against certain levels of radiation for about 60 minutes. Furthermore, Labo also provided the rescue squad members radiation measurement devices known as Procyons, which the squad apparently carried as they conducted their relief efforts. Yeah, the, the fact that both of those things were provided by the lab here instantly told me that it's all bullshit, and it turns out it is. It completely is. I mean, it's basically radiation, but of the mental variety rather than the physical one, which is still not explained fully. Anyway, and during the lieutenant's explanation, she told him to man this. And nearly two hours ago, that very same reactor went through a meltdown. Really? <laughs> there is no reactor. That revelation gave both the man and Natsuko a great shock. No, in the end, the meltdown still happened. Damn it, I thought things would work out if I just defeated this bastard. Oh, the man's comrades probably blew up the nuclear reactor. Oh, right. His two comrades, Hiyama and Dojima, they both die somehow. That's never been explained. I hope we find out. I hope we really find out what happened there. Then what have I, what have we been fighting for? Uh, meaning him and the kids, the other kids. As Natsuko wallowed in his helplessness, the man checked his own pockets. He then found a single ampule of AD. Using it's a piece of cake. It comes with its own cartridge, so just put it in that. Now all you've got to do is break off the tip, put it against the vein, and, and then just press the end. The man administered the medicine as told. Uh, and a sudden change occurred in Natsuko's consciousness. Yes. Oh, the other perspective. He was struck with an abrupt, intense feeling of loss. The same sensation he felt after he fought with the man. The sensation that he was fading away. Hmm. What is this? Yeah, it's a lone desire. It's taking you away. Am I going to disappear just like this? No, I'm just gonna put him into stasis, I guess, or something like that. His five senses rapidly faded into the distance. Death soundlessly drew near for the second time that day. And that's when Natsuko prayed from the bottom of his heart. That until he could confirm Mashra and Luis's safety, until he could discern that girl's true identity, don't let me disappear. Ah, you won't. It's fine. But that prayer was in vain. No, it's not. Don't lie to me. We've been through both routes. Game, don't lie to me. Natsuko's consciousness was buried in the darkness. He's gonna wake up, we know that. Don't lie to me, game. I know things that you told me. Before he knew it, his consciousness was in the darkness once again. He was in the world, shut away from everything. All of his senses had shut off. How much time had passed? Uh, I didn't disappear. Congratulations, you're still not dead. As soon as that realization hit Natsuko, he heard a voice echoing from somewhere. Rise so much just now. Is the radiation down here? 
This isn't good. Let's get out of here. Wait, let's not... It's not that much higher than the AD's limit. I think we'll still be okay. Is that June? And the other voice is... His hearing soon returned, followed quickly by his sight. Hello, Louise. That's Louise, the 13-year-old girl who's been running about and kicking everyone's ass, basically. Uh, he saw a girl he was quite familiar with standing there within the flames. Louise? Why is Louise here? No, first things first. Why have my senses come back? What's happening? It's a very good question. Just then, someone beside the man looked at Louise and spoke. Miss Sonomia. Oh yeah, Enna's here as well. Yes, sir. We never got an explanation why she's here in this very securely secure facility at like 6 a.m. Everyone was here at 6 a.m. Somehow. Okay, the kids snuck in. The rescue squad was here because there was an emergency. But how the fuck did Anna get here? She's just a teacher. That's never been explained. I hope they explain that to us at some point. She wasn't wearing her glasses, but there was no mistaking that it was Anna. Oh, as if that... Damn it. As if glasses are a fucking mask or something like that. Hide your identity. This is... Oh, no, it didn't work for... Oh, I guess it, we're working with the Superman logic. Clark Kent puts on his glasses. Nobody recognizes that he's Superman. Sure, let's go with that. What's Professor Tsubakiyama doing here? What on earth is going on right now? Beside the man were June and Anna, all surrounded by flames. As Natsuko struggled to process everything in his extreme confusion, the man shouted at Luis. Calm down, you don't have to be afraid of us. We came here to save you. Well, she doesn't believe that because the night before, literally this guy here, whose face, uh, you know, she recognizes, you know, pointed the gun at them and tied them up and left them, you know, in an abandoned warehouse type thing. So obviously she's not going to trust her. And she doesn't know that he's lost his memories. She has no idea, to, no reason to think that. But predictably, the terrorist's persuasive words to Luis fell on deaf ears. She turned around and ran away. June and the man pursued her. L Luis, why are you running away? It's me, June. Oh yeah, like this is maybe the one of the only two times the game actually calls her Luis. <laughs> like actually. Uh, and I don't have to. Anyway. Yes, oh, everyone has key cards. Wait, wait, wait. And I runs off. I need 307 MSV. It's very high levels of psychic radiation. Oh, come on, give us a break. You take the left. Yeah, lots of action, searching around, trying to find uh, stuff. June and the man chased Luis into an area contaminated by radiation. Lots of activity and lots of beeping. That noise is going to drive me insane. The man was assailed by an intense headache and numb skin, and the pain propagated to Natsuko as well. Are these the effects of radiation? No. Then Luis must be taking the same radiation damage too. Yeah. No, it's going to be some kind of nonsense where it doesn't really affect people with psychic abilities. But as he thought that, he caught a glimpse of Luis's back in the corner of the man's eye. Yeah, she got shot. Wait, please wait. Luis seemed to be in pain. The bandage on her left arm was oozing with blood. Natsuka promptly screamed at the man. Oh, you're right. Not Watas is the one who shot her. So obviously she's not going <laughs> to like uh, stop. Natsuka promptly screamed at the man. Stop. Don't follow her. Don't chase her. Stop right there. Shut the hell up. The man rejected Natsuko's cry and ran even faster. Those words set off a seething rage within Natsuko for the terrorist that killed him. Ow. Oh, you think you're dead. You're not laying a finger on Luis. But you shut... Come on, you shattered his mind. You know he's n he doesn't have any murderous intent. He's trying to help. Ah, 16-year-old anime boys. They don't know how to think properly. Oh, well, it's an extreme situation. Fine, we can forgive him. Natsuko focused with all his spirit and destroyed the man's current memory of that very instant. Oh, that's what happened. Oh. Huh? Huh? What happened? The man appeared to have collapsed. Oh. So that's what happened then. Luis's footsteps faded into the distance. Ah, so was Natsuko just fucking everything up? In, a, in his own way. And as the man's consciousness became dim, it almost seemed to pull Natsuko's consciousness away with him. Fade to black, and an hour later as well. Though he couldn't tell how many times he had felt this sense of vanishing, it didn't last very long. Eventually, a sharp sound echoed in the darkness, shaking Natsuko awake. Does that sound a watch alarm? Um, they are in some kind of place. 
some kind of engine in the room, I believe. Anyway, as his five senses connected to the world, he heard the sounds of the man speaking with the lieutenant echoing off in the distance. Administer the AD to everyone. We have... With me, we have three of them. They're administering AD, so it's been an hour since they first administered it. But why did I gain consciousness now all the times? A prickling pain ran through the man's arm. It appeared he had just administered himself with AD. And just then, that sense of vanishing assailed Natsuko once more. There we go. Why? Why am I going through this sensation once more? Okay, once is coincidence, twice is a... Uh, what's it called? Connection? Three times is a pattern. He better recognize the, the connection. But oh, whatever. Now, once is an anomaly, twice is a coincidence, three times is a pattern. There we go, that's the thing. Maybe the words are slightly different, but you know, that's the idea. I mean, that's because you're a smart kid. Enough. Figure it out. It happened each time the man administered AD. There we go. Don't tell me this sensation is due to AD. The AD. The AD. Yes, it is. Come on now. But I thought AD was an anti radiation drug. Well, you thought wrong. Natsuko was beginning to realize something. Is something correct? Possibly something vital. But in the blink of an eye, the darkness consumed Natsuko's thoughts. Hmm, Natsuko thought to himself in the darkness. What the hell is going on? Why are my senses cutting in and out intermittently? Is my lingering BC energy becoming unstable inside the man's head? Hmm, come on now. But there was no way he could re reach an answer. He had no information to work with, and without his five senses, the best he could do was guess. Oh, you have some information to work with, come on now. A ghost, eh? Right now, I'm an even more fleeting existence than I thought. Eventually, even his sense of time grew vague. And then he was abruptly greeted by his fourth awakening. A little bit later, they put out the fires, they found the thing. In an instant, all his senses came back to him. Moriba, we'll meet up in the center. Let's search for more ID. Quickly. What? Once Natsuko came to, he realized the man was running through a passageway. The man's intense headache and numbness of the skin faintly propagated to Natsuhiko. It's the same feeling as last time. Is anyone there? Say something if you are. The man raised his voice as he searched through the room and moved on to the next. Oh yeah, right. It's okay, yeah. Yuri is some kind of separate entity entirely because like... Uh, she didn't disappear when the AD was administered to anyone. People remember her and everything else. So yeah, that's... Kiss she. Oh well, we'll find out. Eventually the man's rushed impatient thoughts vaguely propagated to Natsuhiko. Survivors and AD. He was apparently looking for those two things. Moribe, any luck? I checked all three rooms, but I got nothing. Same here. Then this one's the only left room left. The room the man was looking at had a nameplate name reading Dr. Miyoko Tenkawa, Natsuhiko's mother. This is mom's office, doing all sorts of research. That's right, this is where Yuri disappeared and I learned the truth. But then who's that girl that looks exactly like her? Moribe. Moribe, let's go in. Uh. Yee. And as the two of them entered the room, Jun's watch chimed. Oh. Already? Let's get out of here. We promised we'd go back after three minutes. Oh, but that's... Because such. As he heard those words, Natsuko finally understood the situation. Okay, let's see. It seemed the two of them had designated a specific time frame for them to search a contaminated zone. I see, so that's why they're in such a rush. Wait, now that I think about it, wasn't the place they had chased Luis also a contaminated zone? Wait, don't tell me. Yes, she's also there. A certain hypothesis came to Hanatsuhiko's mind. And he got evidence supporting that hypothesis once June and the man slipped out of the contaminated zone. With some AD and stuff like that. Well, right as the man shut the security gate, Natsuko's five senses rapidly faded away. Oh yeah, right, they do, you know, because uh, BC, the psychokinetic stuff, is actually like a scientifically proven thing. They have developed walls and stuff like that, materials that can block it out. Just like radiation, kind of. So it's, you know, yeah, it's basically just psychic radiation instead of the regular kind. I knew it. My awakening has some sort of connection with the contaminated zones. And as he held that conviction, Natsuko's consciousness once again sank into the darkness. <laughs> oh, wait. I think I understand now. Case N is something that's like uh, that happened nine years ago now. So it's like... No, wait, no, that happened. No, wait. The lockdown began before Natsuko became a ghost. Psychic ghost. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I thought 
he was the cause of the case and but no no that's something else that's something else never mind my brain is thinking too hard i should think less although i don't give myself time to think i let everything spew out of my mouth instead of simmering inside my brain during these once he was shut inside the darkness natsuko began to think but even if they if i figured out figured that out what good does it do i'm still nothing more than the ghost now aren't i Natsuko was struck with helplessness, but even so, it was only a few dozen minutes later that he eventually reached the turning point. Hmm? Oh, we are blazing through this. Well, I guess he is fading in and out of existence. Sort of. Flashback. Huh? The fifth awakening groggily began. It's like a bad hangover. Inside a uh, big thing. Terra is down here with us. All right. Terrorist is one of the nine. Yeah, they're suspecting that one of the people is the terrorist still out here. No one's saying that at all. They have their own theories. This is the point where they are going mad. The seeds of going insane. Now, do you mean to say there's a terrorist among the six of us? That's even more unlikely. Oh, it turns out it's 100%, but the terrorist is brain dead. Or sort of. Well, yeah, effectively. What's left is just the man. Several people around the man were arguing about something. What's the situation this time? What's this about the terrorist? Don't tell me they figured out the man's true colors. Nope, not yet. But how? Oh, I could have sworn I erased his memories. Alright, let's just call all calm down for a minute, guys. What's your problem? You're the only one who hasn't spoken their thoughts on the matter, alright? What's not good gain his sight? He first saw Enna's face. Near her were Jun, the lieutenant, the girl, and Ukita. Even Mr. Kita's in Labo? Why? He works there! You knew this! Ah, uh, Natsuko has this problem of asking questions that he knows the answers to. It's stuff that's literally like, he knows it. And yet he's at... Ah, uh, that's a problem something didn't these characters have sometimes. It's a little annoying, but oh well, whatever. I mean, when Mr. Kita had that guest lecture, he said... In the unlikely event a leak occurs, the automatic radiation leakage prevention system activates. Several bulkheads and gates are installed that lock down to completely shut out the scattering of radioactive material. Alright, he doesn't know that it's uh, psychic material instead of radioactive. Should have very well known that he could, could have been locked underground in the case of a meltdown. Yeah, so why did Mr. Kita stay behind during the evacuation? Because he's got other responsibilities as well. Was he really the sleep agent? Oh, right, there's the thing. No, nah. For a moment, he saw Okita in a suspicious light. But, no, wait a second. Something's not right if you think about it. If Mr. Okita were the terrorist, were with the terrorist, then he would have escaped as soon as the meltdown happened. If the terrorist actually escaped, what's that about? Oh, right, by this point, they have found both of their bodies, I think. Oh, so we don't get it, says that. Mm. But at any rate, I still don't know why he stayed on the ground. What's more, it's odd that Professor Tobakiyama is here too. What business would a high school teacher have in a place like this? Yeah, that's it. His doubts didn't stop there. He was still completely in the dark about who Yuri's lookalike was or why she was here. It's no use. There's just too many things I don't understand. Me too. Fine. In that case, as Natsuko recalled the time he d dived into Mashiro's memories, I want to know. He focused on that wish with all his spirit. Diving into. At that moment, all of the man's memories, starting from when he had awoken, floated before Natsuiko's eyes. Memories of a heroic struggle in the midst of a hopeless situation. All sorts of things. The announcement of a case N and the subsequent lockdown of all the bulkheads. The encounter with Enna and Ukita, who were trapped below. The pressing fires, the spreading ro radiation, the lack of AD, the difficult search for survivors. And the gruesome murders that occurred within the inescapable walls of Labo. To overcome those countless hardships, the man threw himself into danger and kept on advancing regardless of any injuries he sustained. Eventually, they reached an escape route, the cargo lift in Area 6 which Natsuhiko broke. Because he put Mashiro in there, sent it up, and so that nobody else could follow him. Good job. But what was waiting for them was the... was that the control panel Natsuko destroyed. And oh yeah, and there's another girl that was just dead randomly. And the corpse of an unfamiliar girl. 
like that's not been answered that's all that's just, just completely out of the blue just took everyone by shock i still don't know anything about that no there was a document in the facility that said that somebody was born in labo that might be the girl that's been born in labo but that there's no information on that as well God, so many questions so many questions. Natsuka's consciousness returned from the man's memories and linked back to the present. Before he knew it, all eyes were on the man. Hey, what's with the sudden silent treatment? What the hell was that? The man appeared to be thoroughly confused himself. A random flashback. Natsuka gasped at that sign. Don't tell me, he saw those memories the same time I did. While well, you accessed them. So... probably? If that were the case, then the man had really relived his memories of three hours in the span of a few seconds. Not his memories as a terrorist, but rather his memories as the rescue worker known as Watase Kasasagi. The current Watase was com also almost was almost a completely different person compared to the homicidal murderer. Can memory loss alone cause such a drastic change in someone? We actually don't know if Kasasagi has actually murdered anyone. Not sure about that. Don't get any concrete information on that, at least so far. Uh, can memory loss alone cause such a drastic change in someone? Well, why not? A person is made up of memories. It's all in the memories and how they interact with each other. Like, personality is basically entirely based on memories. You know, you get a new memory, if it's significant, then it causes you to reevaluate and interact with all the other memories and everything else like that. Insignificant ones are just kind of shelled away with the similar ones. But yeah, without memories, you're just nothing really. You're just acting on instinct alone. Memories are what make the person. Pretty much entirely. If the man's true self was how he was before he lost his memory, then where in the world did the current Watasa get his personality from? But there were more pressing matters for Natsuko to ponder. In any case, murders in Labo, what's going on here? I think the two rescue workers who died were probably the terrorists from back then. What kind of lab or researcher would go so far as to kill a girl like that, and for what purpose? Eh? Alright, the, the girl by the elevator. If all those incidents happened before the bulkhead shut, then does that mean the perpetrator is amongst the people present? Maybe? That's a good question, actually. Just then, Watasa looked around at everyone as though he too shared Natsuiko's doubts. First was Ukita. Is Mr. Ukita the sleep agent, or did he merely get dragged into this mess? If Mr. Ukita is in fact the sleep agent, then maybe he double-crossed the terrorist for some reason. At the very least, that brings up the possibility that he killed the two terrorists. Very unlikely. Next was Anna, right, the most mysterious person actually. I don't want to think of Professor Tsubakiyama as a murderer, but if she, if she isn't, then what's she even doing here? Yeah, I didn't answer that at all. Who is she? After she refused to cooperate with us when we asked for her help, she's the last person I expected to see here. She explained to everyone that she came here because a staff member called her up, but I'm not so sure about that. At, like at 6 a.m. Like, ugh, that's such nonsense. It's like what, Tuesday? Bulks to that. And next came the other two rescue workers. Jun and Lieutenant Tachiban are in the same rescue squad as the terrorists. What's the other way of the around? The terrorists infiltrated the rescue squad. Come on now. But as far as I can tell from how they've acted so far, they seem trustworthy enough. Especially Jun. I definitely can't see her killing anyone ever. And finally, Watase turned to look at the girl who called herself Yuri, but... Yuri's gone. Oh, right. You're right, but why? Yeah, she just kind of wanders off at times. It's weird. When Watase looked around in a panic, he caught a glimpse of her from behind. Although I guess she kind of realized what she is and that she doesn't belong or something like that. She's an oddity. Found her. She headed for Area 5. Watasa and the rest of the group split up and searched for Yuri once she ran off into Area 5. I don't think Moriwa ever told Yuri that the inner ring was a contaminated zone. If she ran there... Those thoughts were imbued with the righteous desire to save people, as if it were only second nature to him. Go! Save her! Natsuko approved of Watas' intentions as he ran into the contaminated zone. His Procyon's alarm blaring, Watase found Yuri in front of the elevator hall. Yuri? Hmm? Yuri? Alright, something happens now and his memories of this encounter just get wiped for some reason. Ah. 
Oh, but not to go races them again for some reason. So you really did come after me. What do you mean? You really did come after me. Of course I did. Is she talking to Natsuiko? Anyway, this place is dangerous. It's a contaminated zone. You're always worrying about me like this, aren't you? Yeah, she's talking to Natsuiko. She's ignoring Watase. But then why? Why did you do something so horrible to me back then? So that's why she wasn't talking to Watase this whole time at all. She's talking to Natsuiko. Uh, he abandoned her in that room back then. That's... Ah, that makes sense now. He let go of his memory of her. And then, but she, then I guess she manifested in that room afterwards. I guess that makes the most amount of sense. I guess. I'm not sure, but that's the only thing that makes, that connects all the things in some way. Those words confused both Natsuko and Watase. Something so horrible, what could she be talking about? Letting her go, forgetting her, acknowledging that she's dead, that, that's, ah... Ah, that makes sense now, because Yuri never saw uh, Watase, never interacted with him. Ah, uh, okay, okay. There wasn't any applicable answer to be found within Watase's memories, but... Do you really not remember? A minute later, and I would have died. I was really scared when I found myself trapped alone, all alone in that sea of flames. And yet you were also the one who saved me. Once he heard that, Natsuko finally understood. I see, she, she's probably knew of Watas from before he lost his memories. Hmm. Oh, but, 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 she, she's not real. But what, oh. Ah, if that were the case, then of course she'd be confused as to why Watasa currently seemed to be a completely different person. Yuri stepped out to Watasa and spoke up. Captain Kasagi, please, please let me know your mind. Let me know your mind. Wait, does that mean she's communicated too? Why do they call them communicators? Because they can communicate. Uh, solid logic. That's yeah, fine. Whatever. And anyway, as soon as that thought hit Natsuko, a certain memory flickered in Motasa's brain. Ah, oh, that bit. The struggle. The shattering. Is this memory of when we fought? Yes. But why? Didn't I erase all his memories? Well, you have your memories and you are inside his head, so there might be some cross leakage happening. A moment later, Arengue, Watase screamed and made a mad dash out of the elevator hall. He doesn't want to remember. His mind was whirling with intense fear. For some reason, he was equating Yuri with his memory of Natsuko from back then. Natsuko recalled the mental voice he heard from Watase right before the memory erasure. Communicators aren't human. They're mind-corrupting monsters. Still discreet. No, they're human. They are human. They're not monsters. Monsters are less than human. They're not interesting. Monsters don't make decisions. Humans make the decisions. That's what makes them worse than monsters. This is a monster hunt. Kill or be killed. Kill, 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 kill. kill. Don't tell me his emotions from back then are coming back. He's scared though. Perhaps he's going to be in danger if this keeps up. He's behaving like he's scared. Ah, and you're... Oh, rah. Ah. In an attempt to save Yuri, he's shattering his memory of that uh, thing again. Natsuko once again sought to destroy Watase's current memory. Disappear. That's not helpful. Mm. Natsuko, you're making things worse, actually, it seems. Agony. Well, at least we know what happens this time around. At that very moment, Watase's mouth spewed blood and vomit. Oh. A little feedback there. Right, that happened as well. Too much psychic attacks and the body. What's this all of a sudden? It couldn't be an effect of erasing his memories, could it? I mean, that's the only difference that has happened, so... Now that he thought about it, Wastase also fainted when Natsuko erased his memory to give Luis a chance to escape. It seemed that the bodily damage of memory erasure was no laughing matter. If I keep doing this, will it end up killing him? Maybe. What does his consciousness... Consciousness was rapidly fading away. Crap, if this bastard dies now, then I'll die too. Natsuko's current existence was extremely unstable as he had lost his flesh and was no more than a consciousness lingering inside Watase's brain. If Watase, the host body, so to speak, were to die, then would I disappear too? Maybe? Screw that, I don't want to disappear. That's a good attitude to have. 
defiance in the face of overwhelming and impossible odds. There was no way he could disappear without knowing the full story behind this incident, without solving the mystery behind the girl who called herself Yuri. I really hate to admit it, but I'm in the same boat as this bastard. This isn't the time to just give up and die. Wake the hell up, Kasasagi Watase. Natsuko wished with all his strength. And success, willpower, uh, always overcomes physical and bodily limitations. And Watase reclaimed consciousness with a scream. I'm not gonna scream, there's other people in the room, well, in the house, so I can't. That would be very inappropriate of me. Alright, he's holding out for now. They had wasted time, but probably not that much. How's the girl? Gone. But by the time Watase rushed back into the elevator hall, Yuri had already disappeared. Hmm. Afterwards, Watasa and the others concluded the search for Yuri for the time being and regrouped in the Neuroscience Laboratory in Area 5. Yes, look at the brain. Oh, they're still using paper things. And the brain scan thing, anyway. I checked the B2, but I didn't find her. Me neither. Yeah, she can just kind of fade out of existence, basically. So we really lost sight of her, eh? As he watched everyone give their reports with depressed faces, Natsuka thought to himself, I ended up helping her escape, but was that really the right choice? Uh, no. The simple answer is no, you fucked up, kid. Well, it's not like I had a choice back then, you did though. You're just being a bit too rash. As Natsuka agreed with himself, great. Uh, he focused on the laboratory itself. The sight of all the equipment red already... The sight of all the equipment ready there began to bother. Now, really there. The sight of all the equipment there really began to bother him. There we go, that's how it should be. Sometimes this game has some errors. I feel the need to correct them because it just sounds incorrect. There's something just weird. That's strange. Laboratories like these usually experiment on mice and stuff, don't they? Well, but mice don't have psychokinetic powers, so, you know. It's always all the equipment here scaled for human use. As Natsuka pondered on that observation, Ukita suddenly started interrogating Watase. In fact, why did you go to the basement in the first place? How did you lose your memories? Well, that's Natsuka's fault. Amnesia caused by external trauma normally fades away with the progression of time, yet you show no signs of recovery, regardless of how long it's been. Do you not find that strange? It is strange, he's got a child inside his brain. Keep continuously breaking his brain, so that's not helpful. Mr. Ukita, are you implying something? Something incorrect. I am. It is my belief that Captain Kasasagi may be lying about having amnesia. I mean, it's technically not amnesia, his my memories were shattered. Yeah. That's impossible. Why would he ne ever need to lie about something like that? I believe that it's because he's trying to hide something. No, if I'm to be completely honest, I've suspected that from the very beginning. What's gone into Mr. Rukita all of a sudden? Is he blaming Yuri's disappearance on Watase? Does that mean Mr. Rukita wasn't one of Watase's comrades? As Natsuka pondered that thought, Watase objected to Ukita's accusation. I've done nothing wrong, even without memories, I. Then go ahead and prove your innocence. Like, no, like, you don't prove a negative, you prove positive. It's on you to prove that he's lying, not on him that he's telling the truth. That's just, it's not, that's not how basics work. Watase was pierced by everyone's suspicious stares. Ukita's accusation was persuasive enough, was it? I'm not persuaded. I, I wasn't persuaded the first time around, still not. But if their suspicion of him grows any stronger, what will happen to Watase? If they restrain him, it'll restrict my ability to act too, won't it? Also, I have memories of the two, the three dead. In the off chance that Mr. Ukita was the one who killed everyone, really unlikely. If there is discord between the terrorists inside the family, inside this facility, then Ukita could very well end up killing Watase anyway. Mm, no. In which case, Natsuko's spirit would likely vanish as well. What do we do? It doesn't look like Mr. Ukita is willing to give up on his suspicion of the current Watase. Should I try temporarily restoring the bastard's memories? How oh, you shattered them. You didn't even look at them. You don't know what memories they are. No, I can't. If I did, that would truly be the revival of a murderer in itself. Then what should I do? What the hell can I do? You're a psychic ghost. Figure it out. As he searched for options, he suddenly remembered the lesson from a few days ago. In short, BC is direct brain-to-brain -brain communication. Brains. Brains are a fancy thing. Telepathy stimulates the parts of the brain responsible for hearing to produce the same response as if it were actually hearing it. So it's a kind of hallucination. 
True, but since it's the brain perceiving the information, that might already make it a hallucination to begin with. Right, complex science stuff. Theoretically, that influence isn't limited to the sense of hearing. The possibilities of B are endless. I see. If I can cause the brain to hallucinate in senses other than just hearing, if Natsuko could deceive not just what us is hearing, but his sight, his touch, and his sense of time, as well as his, as his awareness itself. Oh, he could, in essence, fabricate the memory within the mind. Okay, that... Okay, I'll need to hear what Natsuko's thinking process about that, what he's about to do, or soon enough. Can I do it? I've got no choice. I have to. Natsuko immediately focused his mind and warmed his way into Watase's consciousness. So he's just... Whole cloth creating that memory of Watase finding... He could feel time was flowing slowly compared to the real world. Let's see, in short, all I need to do is prove that Watase was conducting rescue squad activities. So, Natsuko began by projecting his own memories. And you are? We're the rescue squad that received a distress call from a labo. Rescue squad? You kids won't be survivors, right? Yeah, we happened to be down here by coincidence and got caught up all in all this. Coincidence? Sure. Natsuko focused hard on that vision. To plant the memory into Watas's mind, Natsuko concentrated on it even harder than he would when using telepathy. Did it make it through? So, the moment Natsuko asked himself that, he saw the new vision floating amongst Watase's memories. It's okay, so he's planting memories inside his brain. Semi-real ones, but then also... Uh, man, I knew Natsuko was going to become a psychokinetic god, but like... Okay, this is re some real fuckery right there. Mm, he, I think he's making all the wrong decisions with his powers, though. Like it's not, not like, it's not really making things better. It's working. BC can be used to fabricate memories. Great. Basically, that's that's like a crime. I just committed a crime. Good job, kid. I've had enough experience with Tassa's point of view, so if I apply our joint memories to good use, it should be easy for me to create new ones from scratch. That's just it's just really fucked up. That's just really fucked up. He's normalizing it. Hopefully, he won't. Uh, well, at least hopefully they'll realize that's really, really fucked up and bad and not do that in the future, but I... I, I, I mm. Next, I should create the image that Watase's comrades were proper rescue workers as well. Natsuka concentrated once more. We're the rescue squad that received the distress call from Labo. I think that's what the first guy was like. The other one was... You'd have been better off not noticing that. We should have put you through a little more pain back then. It was a mistake to show you mercy. Oh yeah, back, back in the uh, the warehouse where they fall, they found them and ambushed the kids and just tied them up. For some reason, they didn't kill them. They were willing to... They, like That's really what doesn't make sense. Like, if you're willing to blow up a nuclear reactor, killing thousands, maybe millions... Uh, like, why, why did they just leave three witnesses like that in the warehouse? Anyway, well, fine. Okay, good. But going by my memory of him would make him out to be an obvious terrorist, so... Natsuko used the voice he heard the second man use as a base to manipulate the vision so that the man had said something else. Eight more crimes. Captain, we've discovered survivors in the basement. Get down here right away. No. Captain, we've discovered survivors in the basement. Get down here right away. A little bit more. We've discovered survivors in the basement. Get down here right away. Sure. Okay, so he's doing audio visual editing on the spot in the mental realm. Okay. Okay. A vision like that's sure to work. Get that plan on his part, honestly. Let's go then moved on to imagine the men conducting rescue activities. It's really not well thought out. It's really not well thought out at all. 6.42 AM. Watasa received a radio transmission from one of his subordinates and went down to the basement. Several minutes after that, he ran in the basement with his two subordinates. Watasa was wearing his protection suit, his subordinates were wearing ones as well. Everyone's a uh, yellow man. Captain, over here. I heard footsteps coming from this way. And eventually they encountered the children. They must have gotten a report and came to rescue us. 
We're saved. Hey there, please save us. Survivors? That vision floated amidst Watasa's memories now. Alright, looks like this will work. But it still lacks credibility, so... What are your names? He's Natsuko, and I'm Masha. And this one's Luis. Luis? A nickname. Comes from Luis San Yui Sanomie. Yeah. Never gonna hear me say that again. I see. Watasa looked at his watch as he spoke. The hands pointed to 652. And Watasa's memory was appended with that detail as well. Professor Tsubakiyama was the only one here who should know Luis's nickname, so hopefully they'll get her to believe him. Oh, wait, what? Just then, Natsuko noticed a certain oddity about the memory he had just forged. Forgery. Watasa's watch turned into my watch. Perception. But why would that happen? By changing someone's memories, do my own memories have an effect on them? Is that it? We're in some uncharted territory right here, so... Uh, you make the rules, apparently. He tried thinking about it, but he could not quite understand the reason. Actually, wait. Okay, no, that is a shadow. For some reason, I was thinking that... Is this shadow that of someone else? But no, it's just really, really distorted. Sometimes... You know, artists can be very clever and whatnot, but like little details that you don't really notice, like, ooh, the shadow, you know, the person is here, but the shadow is of some other character. Ooh, like a, like a, one of those other things. Ah. I'm looking for a word, but I'm not, here, I'm not, I can't get to it. Anyway, moving on. He tried thinking about it, but he couldn't quite understand the reason why. It bugs me, but I guess there's no helping it. Let's continue. Knowing Luis's nickname might not be sufficient in the evidence on its own. If Professor Tobakiyama doesn't pick up on it, then it's all over. I need to add one more memory to gain everyone's trust for sure. As he considered that requirement, Natsuko figured out what would make the perfect evidence. Now that I think about it, a few hours ago, back when he and Masha had been locked up in Area 5, they had entered Miyoko Tenkawa's office in their search for a security card. And inside his mother's desk drawers, Natsuko had discovered several metal boxes. Ah, uh, metal boxes. Everyone likes a big metal box. Packed with medical ampules. Yes, yes, yeah, see. It's written there. Alone desire. That's like... Like that name made me realize that's bullshit. That's some kind of... Anyway, I didn't realize it back then, but that must have been AD, right? I mean, it literally says AD on the box. What us and June had later went into Miyako Tenkao's office and found five ampules of AD, but they didn't find the ones inside the desk drawers. So if I just bestow Watasa with this, this memory of the AD... Damn. Magic. This is... There was AD in a place like this? There was this much AD being kept inside the facility too. Natsuko bestowed Watasa with that memory and returned to reality. Using the word bestowed. Hmm. Most <laughs> literally... He's mad. I was joking when I said psychokinetic god, but he's really acting like one. Ugh. Uh. Stowing him with memories. And as soon as he did, he heard Watasa shout. Ah, oh, yeah. Captain, please calm down. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. But not really. You just had fake memories in it, into your mind. I just remembered. Eh? Wait, does that mean my memory came back? But not really. That's such. God, knowing this, knowing the context behind that is really fucked up, honestly. Like, Natsuko's just... Ah, uh, good job. And as a result of the memory Natsuko had bestowed upon him, Watasa was able to dodge suspicion. After they had discovered the ID in the Miyoko Tenkawa's office, Watasa and the others discussed their plans going forward. Okay, now that we've got my story cleared up, there's something more important we need to discuss. You're talking about Miss Yuri, aren't you? Yeah. It's far too dangerous for her to be wandering around this huge facility. And there's also Natsuko and the others to worry about too. We've looked all over Labo and still haven't found them. Then either they really are moving around, or we missed them somewhere. Police is running around, Mashiro is in the elevator, and Natsuko is in the central area. So, good luck. Natsuko pondered to himself as he listened in on the conversation. Mashiro sighed since she escaped to the surface, well... Apparently not. I guess that means the problem is whether or not Yuri and Luis are safe, eh? That and where I am, I guess. 
thinking about the topic of his own whereabouts made him feel hopeless. With Watasa and the others having already concluded their search of most of Labo, there was only one place remaining where Natsuko's body could be. Right where it was. Area N. That was the only logical place. I mean, that's where he fell down. They're saying there's a raging fire going on in there. Even if my body escaped being incinerated by some miracle, it's probably been exposed to ungodly amounts of radiation. Eh, well, I can suspect that he is partially responsible for that radiation. Or at least the, uh, the not radiation, the psychic outbursts. Somewhat. Me? Ah, who knows? It's complicated. Science fiction things. I guess there really is no chance at all that I'm still alive. Uh, that was something he had already anticipated. Natsuko was still depressed to learn that he didn't even have a glimmer of hope. Oh, but you do, you are alive there. Maybe I should be grateful that I still even have a consciousness here, but but he had no idea how long that would last. The lingering BC energy in Watase's brain could die out that very same moment, erasing Natsuko from all existence. But still, I've been awake for quite a while this time, haven't I? Just a while ago, my consciousness would cut out in and out like crazy, so what changed that? Nobody's been taking AD. As Natsuko questioned that fact, what has a glance at his Procyon? It read 4531 MC. The value is rising. Now that I think about it, my conscience has been awakening in contaminated zones. That, wait a minute. What was the MB AD tolerance level? 4000. The safety AD standard is within 4000 MC. In other words, there's no danger of radiation contamination there so long as you've injected ourselves with AD. That was a conversation with Asa had with Kazumi in his memories. What if what if my consciousness stopped cutting out once the radiation level surpra surpassed the AD tolerance level? Uh, but how would that even work? Okay, because it's not a radiation, it's psychic uh, isolation things. A plausible reason Natsu came up with was that as the radiation grew stronger, it would damage Watasa's body, thereby lowering the man's consciousness level. That sure. I guess he doesn't have information, so that's fine. And conversely, Natsuiko's consciousness and sensation would be given more room to return. Right? If consciousness is a type of energy, then that conjecture holds some water, doesn't it? As Natsuko's thoughts ran about, Watase spoke up in a tense voice. If the contamination keeps on increasing at this rate, the whole facility may eventually be filled with over 8000 MSV, the dangerous levels. If that happens, they will be the same as not having any ID at all, eh? If that's the case, then both Luis and that girl are by no means safe. After that, the group's discussion progressed and they eventually decided on a course of action. They would split into two teams and begin their search that way so as to not overlook any of these survivors. Okay, then I'll help out as much as I can. What has teamed up with Kazumi and Nikita? The three of them left, then left the neuroscience lab. What has team quickly went through Area 4 to begin searching Labo once more? I think that rhymed. But they failed to find either Luis or Yuri, and ended up in Area 3. Is it just me or is something burning? You're right, where in the world is it coming from? Well, the entire facility was on fire at some point, so there's lingering fires. As they traced the smell to its source, they found the fire burning in the emergency staircase. Was the fire not fully put out and it just relit? I think that was the case. It appears that the sprinklers weren't able to put it out entirely because it was in the shadow of the staircase. The shadow of the staircase. Kazumi went to take out the fire hose. Immediately afterwards, Watasa found a fire extinguisher beside the fire and felt a sense of danger for some reason. Oh yeah, they planted bombs in the fire extinguishers. That's how they got all the things to explode. What's this? Captain, I've got the hose. Kazumi soon started to come back with the fire hose. Tachiban, stay back! Retreat! Eh? Yeah? In that moment, countless warning sirens blared away inside Watase's head. Look out! Boom! Oh yeah. He knew. Because he planted it there. <laughs> uh, even though he doesn't remember doing that, he's still got that going. My leg! Kazumi injured her leg. Watase star... Watase parted with Yukita and brought Kazumi to the surveillance room. And after he treated Kazumi, Watase chased after Akita and resumed searching a labo. Watase's search continued fruitlessly, eventually ending at the reference room. 
right? This uh, this room, this is a very important room. There's lots of documents and lots of lots of information about stuff. What does it look toward one of the bookshelves inside and found it to be tightly packed with books and theses? An introduction to the information field theory, author Miyoko Tenkawa. Elementary particles, information and consciousness, author Miyoko Tenkawa. Yeah, she's really been uh, on, on the power of researching that kind of stuff. ESP synchronization hypothesis, author Antoine Colbert, translator Miyoko Tenkawa. Cerebrum, cerebrum, cerebro. Labyrinth of Physiology, author Ryokin Kashibagi. Unbiding from Pseudoscience, The Future and Prospects of Parapsychology, author Koki Sumida. Before Crime, After Days, Self Insert. Uh, Battle Drop, there we go. Author Chikage Sonomura. I should try to remember to look for the name Chikage Sonomura in the credits. See if that comes up. Maybe. Particles, the mind and the brain. Author Shuya Eriguchi. A lot of these seem to be written by mom, but information field, ESP synchronization. What on earth is mom researching? She's researching you. What you are currently, basically. Do these things relate to nuclear power research? No. Come on now. As if influenced by the curiosity in Natsuko's consciousness, what has picked up the book? An introduction to the information field theory, author Miyoko Tenkawa. An introduction to the information field theory. Forward. In modern physics, all phenomena that shape the natural world can be explained with four fundamental forces. But there are phenomena such as the accelerating universe and so on that cannot be explained by these four fundamental forces alone. We're getting a science lesson for now. Well, sort of. Science fiction lesson. It has become clear from a recent high precision observation that the rate at which the universe expands accelerates with time. It is from that survey that the theory of an unknown energy known as dark energy, repulsive gravity, was born. But if dark energy supposedly does exist, then what is it? Various conjectures have been conceived, but they are all merely speculation. Thus, I continue to look into that force from the perspective of an elementary particle physicist and formulate a hypothesis. Could it be information? If a fifth fundamental force does indeed exist, there is a high possibility that it is, in fact, information. It's like the most nonsensical and weird things. But whatever. I use the numerical formula to express the equivalence of information, volume, and energy. And then after deriving its value, I discovered that said value completely matched up with the rate of universal expansion. In other words, dark energy. I don't really get it, but mom seems to think its true form is information, eh? Now that I think about it, Professor Tsubakiyama said that information a type of energy during her lecture too, didn't she? But what is this thesis trying to say then? The following conjecture is based off this theory. Even information itself can exist independently and can possibly interact, be conveyed, without the use of other forces as an intermediary. That is what Yuri is currently. Like basically, there's the answer. For example, since a human's thoughts are a type of information, they can communicate with others without the need for those thoughts to be converted into another medium, such as electrical signals. This is a somewhat extreme expression I'm using here, but this is the gist of the information field hypothesis. The information field is the place where information operates, as the fifth fundamental force, energy. If we are to consider this by using the human brain as an example, the information field generated from thought information may in fact be what we call the consciousness. That's what happened there. Uh, it is still unclear as of this point as to what the process that creates a consciousness entails. All we do know is that consciousness, consciousness is generated inside the brain when countless memories equals fragments of information and electrical signals running through the synapses interact. However, another conjecture can be formed when you think on the basis of this hypothesis. If information can exist independently, then that means that consciousness does not necessarily have to form in a brain. If a fixed amount of information gathers in one spot and interacts with each other, consciousness can be born right then and there. Yeah, that's exactly that, basically that's what happened with Yuri when Natsuko acknowledged that she's dead and basically decided to, you know, forget, you know, let go of her. He let go of all his memories and fake interactions with her in that one spot in that one moment. And so she just kind of coalesced and formed to a thing. Right? I mean, it has to be. Like, they're explicitly explaining 
what happened there in this theory. Anyway, furthermore, if information can be controlled, then it should also be possible to artificially create a consciousness. Exactly. Artificially create a consciousness. Yeah, come on, Natsuko. Put two and two together. Come on, come on, come on. I can't see how that research has anything to do with nuclear power science. But, oh, right, they still think it's nuclear power. Right, I forgot. They are a few pages behind. No, wait, maybe I'm mistaken. Yes, you are. Labo's full name is the 6th Laboratory of Atomic and Biological Organization, all right? So maybe mom wasn't researching the atomic part, but the biological part. Okay, well, at least he's getting to the correct answer through uh, other means. Reasonable means. In conclusion, the various theories laid out in the information field hypothesis have yet to be proven. But this thesis has been reappraised in a form I've never once expected. This is all due to a rapid yet drastic change that has recently swept society. That change is the manifestation of BC, beyond communication. The ability known as BC has been widely acknowledged by society in the last few years. It can be said that this has resulted in mindsets towards the nature of information and ways of communication to undergo tremendous changes. We have also discovered countless people who possess this ability that we never would have conceived as feasible mere years ago. The abilities of BC can generally be classified in two groups. The first one is telepathy, the ability to directly send your voice to another's mind. The other is empathy, the ability to read the voice of another's mind. Describing these two abilities with these extremely coherent terms, we can explain them separately. When BC is used, the user's thought information is not converted into another medium. They communicate with their target by sending that thought information directly into their target's brain by using elementary particles as an intermediary. Uh, this matches up with what I proposed in my information field hypothesis. Two completely unrelated fields of study, parapsychology and elementary particle physics, are connected by BC. Furthermore, while telepathy practitioners are still few, empathy practitioners are even rarer. But the true number of users is not what's important here. It's the fact that an ability such as empathy exists. And also the fact that the existence of information known as the voice of the mind can be observed by others despite previously being unknown to those other than the thinkers themselves. This is indeed the first and biggest paradigm shift of the 21st century. She's suddenly talking about BC now. Creating consciousness, nuclear power, biology, BC. How do these four things connect? Uh, they don't. One is the odd one out. Nuclear power, take that out and it all connects. As not to go hard by that question, Watase suddenly spoke up. The ability to read another's mind. Various doubts suddenly rose up within Watase's mind. Why did Yuri disappear? Why did Luis run away? Why haven't the other three survivors been found yet? But the strongest thought in Watase's mind was, if those kids can read people's minds, and when you take into account they've been running from us, then maybe one of us hates them and they know it. Ah, there we go. Watase is a really smart guy, actually. Figure that it out, anyway. Natsuka was frightened by the conclusion Watase was drawing towards. There was an extremely high probability that the girl who called herself Yuri was a communicator. And it was most likely true that Yuri and Luis were running away from someone who hated them. The only thing Watase was missing was the self-awareness that the one who hated them was none other than he himself. But he doesn't hate them right now. Like, you erased his hatred. Crap. If Watase realizes that fact, but... Communicators aren't human. They're mind-corrupting monsters. This is a monster hunt. Kill or be killed. Kill, 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 kill. Natsuko's consciousness vividly recalled the hatred and murderous intent he had seen within Watase back then. Damn it, I need to do something about Watase's memory right away. No, he's making another mistake. God damn it, Natsuko. But as soon as Natsuko tried to interfere with Watase's memory, Watase was suddenly struck by an intense headache. Why? I haven't even done anything yet. In light of the unexpected situation, Natsuko panicked and loosened his concentration. Yeah, yet yeah, I wasn't... I haven't committed another crime yet. Watase flew out of the reference room and rushed into a nearby restroom. Oh, he's remembering things. Anxiety. Oh, he's actually remembering a thing. A real thing. <gasps> no matter how much he washed his face with cold water, Watase's headache would not subside. Watase even spewed out gastric juices, leaving Natsuhiko confused. Are these effects of radiation? Or maybe, maybe Watase himself doesn't want to remember. Is he refusing to remember that he was full of malice, and this is a result of that rejection? 
Hmm. What does his own feelings of intense confusion were propagated to Natsuhiko? Damn it, I'm thinking about way too much at once. There might be monsters out there who can read people's minds. As soon as Watas had that thought, a bizarre spectacle flickered before his eyes. Hmm. Who are you? Man, I guess you could look at it that way too. How do you know our names? Because a whole lot of communicators, people who can use BC, that is, have been coming to the city. A newscaster. At the end there. What was that? You didn't shatter all his memories, apparently. Don't tell me Watase's memories are threatening to return. In shock, Natsuko strongly appealed to Watase. That's enough, Watase Kasagi. Don't think too deeply about it. Okay. Mm, so I guess Natsuko is trying to help him, but in kind of a... Mm, I don't know. In kind of... Mm, I'm conflicted a little bit about these... About him and all what he's doing here. But it had the opposite effect. Yeah? Wait, could this auditory hallucination be trying to control me? Kind of, actually, yeah, he, he's done actually worse. He's done actually worse than control. He's literally changed your brain. Uh, no, what if... What if someone's been controlling me this whole time? Then who is the me that I've thought was me up until now? It's a very existential question. Who is the me who's been me the whole time? Who is me? Who knows? Damn it, Watase, you're starting to jump at shadows. Well, it's kind of your fault, though. Not so because so... Uh, Watase looked at his reflection in the mirror as if it weren't even his own face. Damn it. What or who should I believe in? Oh crap, at this rate he won't even be able to continue the search, will he? Natsuko felt an impending sense of danger. But then... You're overthinking things, Watase. A person we don't know. A person from his actual memories. A person who... Apparently, and I'm guessing, died doing some kind of accident. That caused Watase of the past to... Become full of hatred. Do that and you'll just wash out to the point where you won't even be able to make sense of anything anymore. Inside the mirror was the face of a girl unfamiliar to both Natsuko and Watase. Eh? What's going on? Is this bastard hallucinating? No, could this just be another flashback of past memory? Watase's mind suddenly reclaimed its composure. Don't overthink things, eh? With that calm whisper, Watase shut off the water. What just happened? That's a very good question. Okay, so it was Natsuko there? Don't tell me. Natsuko recalled was what the words Watase had said when he was a murderer. You have a precious friends, right? Well, there was someone who was more precious to me than anyone else. And that's her. Weak, but motivated. Stupid, but gentle. The very embodiment of light to me. Then was that girl Watase's embodiment of light? I'm guessing so. But if Watase suddenly saw her, then... Does that mean my frequent manipulation of his memories has only made them more easy to recover? Probably. Watase left the restroom. He didn't seem distracted in the slightest. But Natsuka couldn't help but feel a little uneasy about him. And immediately after that, Watase witnessed Anna speaking with Luis. Oh yeah, that bit. And then, like raging waves, things kept happening one after another. Anna, be careful of, of that captain. He's a dangerous man. Yes, he is, but not really. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? And run. Ah, Miss Sanamiya, wait. Wait. Everyone wants to wait, but none of them are going to wait. The two of them rushed to chase her, but what they found wasn't Luis. Yeah, that sound was... It came from this way. Let's go. Uh, wait. Oh, well, they spotted what appeared to be a trail of Luis's blood. Let's follow it. Yee. Yeah. But at the end of their mad dash was... Isn't this a blood transfusion pack? Okay, so Natsuki has no idea what the fuck that is about. Okay. What's something like that doing here? I guess that's unanswered still. Just then. But then... Then... Okay, so... Okay. Alright. Another mystery that has yet to be revealed. Who locked them in and tried to... Like, blow them up with one another... One another of those... Fire extinguisher bombs. Someone locked the room in the emergency staircase. And what else discovered the time bomb hidden inside a fire extinguisher. The bomb's countdown commenced. Open, open, you goddamn son of a bitch. It's not like... 
You can't insult steel. You know, it doesn't work. It doesn't have feelings. It's just metal. Watasa desperately screamed, but the door wouldn't open. Yeah. It's no good. As soon as Natsuko thought that, and I pulled out a gun. Captain Kasagi, out of the way. Uh, I think that should be Watasa's gun, right? Maybe she found it somewhere and never told anyone. Why does Professor Tobaki have a gun? But yeah, I don't think she actually gave us a legit answer to that. Natsuko was astonished, but Anna calmly raised her voice. Or maybe she had the whole time. Right, she's a professional marksman. She gives a bullshit excuse why she's good at it. Smash the door with that down now. Hurry. She gives a bullshit excuse that she's really into airsoft. And that's why she's so good with guns. It's like, come on. Right. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Right, she's a woman of mystery still. What does it kick down the door, the fire door in accordance with Enna's command? I like, even before that, like he kicked down the plate, not the door. He kicked down the goddamn wall itself. Like, what the... Come on now, the door is still intact. Like, still, I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> Kicking down a goddamn steel plate. Piece of wall. Anyway, the two of them are run away from the bomb. Teach, get down. But the blast never came. Indeed. Trap, bomb, gun, dud. A quick succession of events left Natsuko dumbfounded. It was then that June and Nukita came rushing in one after another. They all heard the gunshots. Ah, uh, Captain, Mr. Bakiyama. I heard the most peculiar sound. What happened? Watas looked at Enna's hands in surprise to see the black luster of a pistol. Mr. Bakiyama, what are you, what are you doing with a pistol? Uh, but Natsuko's surprise was incomparable to theirs. Why would Professor Tobakiyama have a gun? His doubts about Enna rapidly deepened. She didn't offer Natsuko, Mashiro, and Luis any help when they asked for her cooperation. Mashiro said that she wasn't opening her heart to them. Yeah, you need to open your heart to be able to, you know, use empathy on someone. Or well, they have to open their heart for you to use empathy on them. Something like that. But while that may have been true, it wasn't as if Natsuko had grown to hate Anna. In Natsuko's eyes, Anna was at, at times gentle, at times strict, and at times charming, an all-around good teacher. And yet, here she was, holding a pistol, and in this facility for some reason, somehow, getting past all the security, so she had clearance to get here. Probably. She was a completely different Enna from the one Natsuko had known. Professor, what on earth are you? It's a very good question. As soon as he had that thought, he recalled the gruesome scene he saw earlier. No, Professor Tsubakiyama isn't a killer. Maybe she is. Maybe she is. I don't actually know much about it, oh, that's weird. As Natsuko shook off that doubt that's, that plagued him for just a moment, Ukita and Jun began to interrogate Anna. What's the meaning of this? Why do you have something like that with you? Ye, I thought you were a teacher. She is, but she moonlights as like a super secret spy agent ninja, maybe, probably. Hold on a minute, you're all making a big misunderstanding. This pistol isn't mine. I found it here in the lab, though. I mean, that is believable, there was at least one. That sounded like a lazy excuse, but what does it told everyone to believe in her? Wait, you believe her? Well, we can't prove otherwise, so yeah, nothing we can do about that. Eventually, at what does suggestion, they dis disassembled the gun and divided the parts between Ukita and Engine. Oh yeah, this was one of the bad endings where if you just like make the wrong choice, then they all start bickering about who gets the gun, and it turns into a Three Stooges scene where they you know, what does it just get shot? <laughs> that is like. Good job, they all behave like you. Anyway, uh, and yes, this is the part where they do the gun thing, but that still didn't clear Natsuko's reservations. Professor, as Watasa and the others moved towards Area 6 to chase after Luis, a somewhat lonely breeze blew through Natsuhiko's mind. By the time Natsuko finally got his mind off Hena, Watasa was already alone in Area 6's inner ring. Watasa was going room to room, searching for Luis. Hmm. Eventually, his eyes fell onto a certain PC monitor. Oh yeah, this bit of information. We are recapping all our stuff right now. Text subject and uh, gene type. GF2R gene type. Subject A, hereditary abnormality type S, deceased, someone's dead. Subject N, hereditary... Abnormality type S, blah, blah blah, subject Y, gene type 4, show no signs of genetic mutation the, via WX particles, discarded. Right, that bit. That's a really important bit. 
and all these subjects are just regular people, deceased. I think they're talking about Yuri there, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway. Uh, discarded. Why is discarding? No pre precedent regarding releases, expected problems, memory recovery, etc. Yeah. I don't know who could, that could be at this point. It could be anyone. It could be Natsuko, it could be Watase himself, it could be Nai for all we know as well. Uh, it's confusing. Uh, observation targets and gene types. Special observation target NA, head 3, abnormality, blah 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 blah. Natsuko 2, Yuri, gene 4, blah blah blah. Yasumi Mashiro, someone else. Bleh. Mashiro level 5, consider irradiation test. Natsuko subject N, April 7, 2021. Subject Y, U, September 10, 2030. Right. Wait, I'm trying to. Wait. Okay. Six days ago. That's when the story started. Was that a day later? Yeah, no, that's when the story started. Subject Y is U, Yuri. Maybe you. Ah, oh, but. Ah, uh, but. Ah, uh, hmm. No, I. Ah, uh, I. I oh, no, I'm not any wiser. I'm not any wiser. What is this? Subject, gene types, observation targets. No, more importantly, subject Y, change to U, September 10th, 2030. September 10th, that's the day everything started changing, wasn't it? What the hell is this file? What does any of this mean? At the same time, Natsuko felt something off about some of the descriptors. A bizarre sight suddenly flickered in Motas's brain. Is that? I think it's because they're basically scared of those people. She was ostracized by others because of that power even before that incident. Mm. Memories. What in God's name is this? Nike laughter. Mm. Well, his memories are coming back again. Mm. But why? What's bringing it back? The event took Natsuko by surprise, and one second later, Watase fled out of the room. Well, what the hell is he doing? For some reason, Watas was in complete disarray. His mind was whirling with rage and discomfort. And once again, past memories came back. Oh, oh, right. Oh, this is what's happening here. <sighs> Natsuka is going to erase these memories. Why did you so do something so horrible to me back then? I swore I erased that memory. But that memory came bursting out nevertheless. So, Captain Kasasagi, please. Please let me know your mind. I can't with that. And they're running away. Hmm? Why did I... Bewildered, what does it tottered out of the stairwell? Okay, this is new. This is new. This is new to me. This is entirely new. These few minutes where what does his memory and the video footage that they'll have eventually uh, do not mix at all. And right after that, the test subject are dangerous. The test subjects are dangerous? What's gotten into him? Natsuko was left in confusion as the, that idea rose up inside of Watase. Don't tell me. Don't tell me she was a test subject. Make a lot of sense. That would make all of the sense, actually. Is that why reading the document provoked Watase's memories? Natsuko panicked and dove deeper into Watase's mind. Hmm. The test subjects are dangerous. What the hell was that? What the hell were those words? I don't know them. I've never heard those words before. What is this? It was clear that Watase was fearfully resisting the hatred that was seething within his mind. But the jet black hatred gradually corroded that fear, painting it out. It's all black. The hatred then in evolved further into murderous intent. If this keeps up, Watase will revert back to how he was back then. I need to do something about his memories. No, but then... Considering the damage memory erasure inflicted upon Watase, any further memory erasure could very well kill him. And naturally, if Watase died, Natsuko would vanish. And what do I do? How could I seal Watase's hatred? Think, there's got to be a way. There's gotta be a better way than just fucking around with his brain, just all willy-nilly. Right? Come on now. Uh, Watase was scared of Yuri for some reason. He hated her and wanted to murder her. Even though she's already dead, technically, and then something else. Even though normally he cared for her and tried to keep her safe. Each time his memories threatened to return, so too would his fear, hatred, and murderous intent. 
In that case, why don't I just get jump on Watase and give him the misconception that she's already dead? So that's what happens. Okay, interesting. I'm sure that would erase his fear of her, as well as his hatred and murderous intent, although unintended consequences. Fix one problem, causes a bunch of others later on. He didn't know if it would work. But if he left things as is, Watase could very well regain his memories. Natsuiko had no choice but to take chances with his plan. Create an image of a dead Yuri in Watase's memory. Okay. And then that scene happens where she's dead, been shot in the forehead. And thus Natsuiko fabricated another memory for Watase. And then... Five minutes later, Watase remained frozen on the spot as if he were dead. Hey, how long do you plan to stay like that? You are fucking with his brain to the point of, like, where it might not recover in any sensible way? Come on, Natsuiko, don't, don't be like that. You're being unreasonable here. Driven by anxiety, Natsuiko called out to Watase. Hey, get a hold of yourself already. How long are you gonna space out for? Hurry up and get back to the others. Eh? Yeah. Watase was shaken back to consciousness by Natsuhiko's voice. He then tottered back to the factory where everyone was waiting. Looks like I, it would be best for me not to tamper with your memory any further than this. You think? You think? Well, at least he thought that. Please, so please, Watase, don't try to regain your memory anymore. Hmm, Natsuhiko prayed. But the distortion caused by his actions was soon exposed. Yee. When Motase reported Yuri's death to everyone, their eyes widened in shock. Impossible. How could she be dead? Was it an accident? Was she murdered? I don't know, but I found her body. That's a fact. Where? Where did you find her? Come with me. It's this way. It all went downhill from there. The body's gone. It was never there to begin with. Okay. Good grief. Are you sure you weren't just seeing things? Apparently he was, completely. I'm not lying. There really was a body here. I swear. There was a girl with blood pouring down her head. She was dead no matter how you looked at. Blood? But I don't see any blood stains anywhere. Mm -hmm. Good plan, Matsuriko. Shit, how did I not see this coming? It's a very good question. How did you not see this coming? The problems kept piling on as Natsuko stood by, unable to do anything. The AD's gone? This can't be happening. Yeah, who took that then? Okay, so it wasn't Natsu- oh, fuck. This is another unanswered question. They stockpiled AD in this uh, lab, but now it's gone. Damn, how the hell did this happen? How, you ask? It's obvious. Someone stole the AD. That's how. He's right. And what's more, the culprit must be one of us. No, there's no way that one of us did it. But when Motase took everyone there to dispel their suspicion, he came face to face with the truth that denied the illusion Natsuka had bestowed upon him. Bestowed. I do like that word. The word excellent is the most excellent word. Indeed comes in second. Bestowed. I think I like that. It definitely ranks in the top five best words. Bestowed. Yes, it's a good word. Huh? He didn't find the body. What else was cast in doubt? Were you, were you lying to us? <laughs> Unknowingly he was. No. They pressed him further. You claimed you went down to the basement to rescue survivors. But perhaps that's yet another lie. And in reality, you came down for a completely different purpose. What different purpose? Isn't it obvious? To kill. Ah, he's correct though, apparently. And at the end, while Kita and Jun thrust before Watase. Come on, tell me, Captain. Did you really come here to save lives? Or glares of rage and blood. Oh yeah, everyone's losing their minds now. Oh crap. Well, okay, Jun and Ukitar. The situation is even worse than the last time Watase was cast under doubt. But Natsuko was painfully aware of why they would doubt Watase. After all, it's his fault. Watase had shot both him and Mashiro. Also that. Natsuko vividly recalled Mashiro's tearful voice and Luis's wounded body. But now, Watase and I are in the same boat. And I hate to admit, but the current Watase is a reliable rescue worker. Hey, there we go. Now that I have no body of my own, I can't save Luis or Yuri without his help. So I need to do everything I can to clear this bastard of suspicion, which you created at least half of it. So that's... Uh, you are responsible there, kid. He knew he had to, but he didn't know how. But right after that, someone completely unexpected stood up for Watase. 
Hold on, you two. You guys are acting a little weird. Eh? And yet, you turned your backs on him the moment the AD disappeared. What kind of sane person does that? No, Professor, you stick up for Watas in this situation. Now, if you stick up for Watas in this situation, June and Nikita glared at Anna. Why are you on the captain's side after hearing everything we've just said? I mean, you barely know, know the guy, right? Unless the two of you in cahoots or some Cahoots, that's also a good word. I see, now I get it. I always did think you were acting strange. Now I finally understand. You two are planning to just save yourselves and leave the rest of us to die. You were the ones who hid the ID, weren't you? All so you could have it all to yourselves. I ah, asked yes, them crazy eyes. They go crazy. <laughs> I do love that. Jun and Nikita sidled up to Watasa and Nena, prompting Natsuko to shout a warning to Watasa. It's too dangerous. Take Professor to Bakemon and run. Heeding Natsuko, Watase took Enna's hand and ran. Okay, the first time this happened, I thought the voice like knew more stuff than he did. I mean, technically he does, but not really. Natsuko is just running on gut instincts here. So that's great. Great planning all, all, all around on his part. Good job. Not the, like, yeah, the first time, the first uh, run through, the first route after this, I thought the voice was like super smart, new things. I was guiding him with like external information, but now, no, he's, he's just he's just a dumb 16 year old shouting things and making things up on the spot, basically, and causing the problems. So that's okay. He did not suka. What does it took in his head and ran? Trying to run, not good. Hold them down. And with those voices at their backs, Watasa and Enna fled. Uh, we are catching up to the spot. Oh, it's already been two hours. Fuck, I did not expect to go for this long today. Oh well, damn it, lost cyber. Okay, tell you what, we're gonna catch up to where the story left off. And then I'm gonna end for today because mm, it's getting a bit late. And I will have, I, I have to, and I have to do other things. I have to prepare for the subsequent day. It's unfortunate, but... There's things that need to be done. Anyway, damn it, lost sight of him. We are close to that point. Matas and Enna had escaped their pursuers and were now hiding in a room in Area 2's inner ring. Sounds like they're gone. Yes. Natsuko gazed at Enna through Watase's eyes. She had a tense, a relentless look on her face one would never expect to see from a teacher. Professor, I can believe in you, can't I? I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm not sure. I don't believe in her anymore. She's... Mm. There's no information on her, really. Natsuko thought about how much he wanted to ask her if he could, but at that moment, a strange sensation struck him. Hmm? Eh? His five senses suddenly blurred. What, what is this feeling? He knew that there should have been light, that there should have been sound, and yet, why did you stick up for me back there? Because I... I have my motives too. For some reason he couldn't perceive the word world correctly. It was as if he had been struck with intense drowsiness. Oh yeah, your body's still alive. Oh no, my consciousness is dulling. Anna was showing something to Watase, but Natsuko couldn't tell what. That's strange, why am I drowsy? Wait, could this be the BC energy lingering within Watase? was starting to run out. Am I disappearing? Disappearing? Me? My consciousness? N no way. Natsuko struggled to brace his fading consciousness. And rapidly? We do. Moribe and old man Okita don't trust me at all, you know? Now, so that's what he became unable to under... Became unable to understand the subject of that conversation. What? You're not saying you plan to go alone, are you? Of course I am. If you came along with me with this thing being... With things being the way they are now, all you do is make things harder for me. Well, yeah, I guess, but... I'll be right back, so wait here, okay? Apparently, Anna intended to leave by herself. Don't do it, Professor. That's clearly way too dangerous. Oh, everything's been dangerous. But what has showed no hint of trying to stop her? I mean, these... these Three high school kids decided to try and stop a terrorist plot they had only gut instinct was happening on their own with no adult help. Like, and, uh, 
that he's talking about other people doing dangerous things. It's like, oh no, only I get to do dangerous things. I'm the protagonist. No one can take the spotlight from me. No, I mean, that's not his attitude, but whatever. Hey, I'm begging you. Please stop Professor Tabakiyama. Natsuko shook off his intense drowsiness and mustered all of his consciousness. The sound, the light, all five of his senses came back to life. And at the same time, Watase sprang into action. No, hold on. That's too dangerous. Huh? Those guys are already suspicious of you after the whole gun incident. That's true. Anything could happen if they see you now. But then what are we supposed to do? Watase stopped Anna as she was opening the door. Phew, thank goodness. But right as Natsuko let him ex himself relax, damn it, drowsiness once again seized him in his grasp. Natsuko clung to reality in a desperate attempt to prevent himself from fading away. And then, I thought of a way to solve all our problems. He could no longer catch the flow of the conversation, but he definitely heard what Asa said that. What? A way to solve all our problems? Oh yeah, right. And right then, he's choking her out so that she doesn't interfere. And as Gron snapped Natsuko's consciousness back to reality once more. I'm sorry, but I'll need you to take a little nap here for a while. Before he knew it, he saw Anna passed out through Watase's eyes. But what do you think you're doing? But Watase just left the room. And destroyed its opening mechanism out in the hall. After knocking out Anna, Watase headed towards the heart of Labo. Apparently, he intended to put out the fires in the nuclear reactor area all by himself. Save the day, be the big hero. Save everyone. Yeah, that's what causing the lockdown to happen. At least as far as uh, he knows. Natsuko desperately tried to stop him. Stop it, you dumbass. You'll die. You can't put out the fire of a burning nuclear reactor all by yourself. Even if you could, you'd be exposed to radiation for sure. Someone's gotta do it. You wanna die that badly? Are you really okay with dying if it means saving everyone else? Yes. It's not that I want to die. I just want to save everyone. That's all. Wanting to save people has been the one constant for me this whole time. It was all because you told me to save Yuri way back when this all began. Watase muttered as if he were talking to himself, not so he could listen silently. So, all I want to do is fulfill my role. I hated feeling so powerless, surrounded by nothing but fire, explosions and smoke. When we didn't have enough AD, I went running straight into gas and a contaminated zone. When someone fell into a hole, I grabbed their hand and pulled them out. I protected Yuri with my body when the debris just threatened to crush her. This whole time, all I've ever thought about is how to save everyone. The moment Watase said that, drowsiness began to eat away at Natsuka's consciousness once more. He could tell that this time he was fighting a losing battle to stay conscious. He would probably disappear soon after this. Watase's voice echoed as Natsuko's hearing deafened. I'll be damned if I let the others die because of my actions. And the same goes for letting anyone die because I did nothing. If putting out the reactor fires will save everyone, then I'll do it. Even if... Even if I lose my life as a result. What does a silent determination could be felt even in Natsuhiko's consciousness? There was no lie, nor bluff, nor pretense in Watase's mind. Only the unadulterated desire to save everyone. Watase, you... But once Natsuko said those words, he finally reached his time limit. Natsuka cursed. He couldn't help but curse. If only you were like that from the start. If only you were a righteous rescue worker, then neither me, nor Masha, nor Luis would have had to suffer like this. Hmm. That's me. That's what Natsuka said. Burn that name into your ears. Carve it into your mind. Reflect on that name until the moment you die. Why, Watase? Why? Because he was a different person there. What made you become a terrorist? He said there was an instant 118 people died. Hospital thing. That was the one question Natsuko found vexing. Watase's voice echoed from far away. You get it now? If you do, then shut up. If you keep talking, I might lose my resolve. Okay, I get it. Natsuko calmly prayed. I'll leave the rest to you. I'm leaving Luis, that girl, and Professor Tobakim all in your care, okay? So please, don't let me down. Okay, Watase? And fade to white. Okay, actually, it is getting late. 
past 11 p.m. and I have work to do tomorrow and I have to get up in, what is it, eight hours? Still need to make dinner and breakfast and everything else. Okay, we shall leave it at that for a time being. Hopefully I'll be able to do this tomorrow, but we'll see. It, nothing ever goes as planned, honestly. Uh, work does that. Anyway, anyway, uh, we've reached an intermission point. Yes, I stitch all the weekly streams together into one big block that's published on Monday on YouTubes so that I can have an archive to watch and, well, listen to myself in the distant future hundreds maybe even thousands of hours eventually uh, but that is for later for now uh, we shall leave with some well with some music recommendations I like to do this I like to share a bit of my list only five out of like 30,000 currently something like that anyway the current list contains it's a randomly generated sort of Hatsune Miku Fly With Me. I only actually recently discovered, well, looked up Hatsune Miku's music. Uh, wasn't really into it all that before. Not really, into, there's like two songs that I found that I like. The rest is just, eh, it's fine. Anyway, Bad Company, Can't Get Enough. Garod, stage theme from Valhalla. Another vision, although I've gone through that, so I won't be doing that on this uh, here at all. Anyway, Hironori Doi, Bring the Fate. Uh, I feel like that's from something I just forgot to look up what that's from. And Alabama 3, Too Sick to Pray. Uh, discovered those guys because of the... Woke up this morning song from the... Uh, some, ah, I don't remember. One of the shows. I looked up a bunch of things. Uh, many points in my life where I just look up music randomly. And decide that the things are what they are. Uh, anyway. Uh... Yes, currently then, I shall say bye-bye for now, and return, who knows when, I don't know, honestly. It'll be really nice if I could return soon, but nobody knows. I don't. Anyway, bye-bye for now. Now, oh, hello there. Continuing on from previously... Uh, Natsuhiko learned he can commit crimes with his mind. Yay, crimes. Gracing people's memories, uh, changing them, and just creating new ones out of whole cloth. That's just... It, mm, mm. Hopefully he will have consequences for that. At least some recognition that what he did is not okay at all. Uh, well, so, alright, this thing. Uh, there was a mistake on my part, apparently, in the music recommendations. Was it even two mistakes? I forget. Anyway, one was uh, the music from Valhalla. Apparently, whenever I found it, it had a different name and was like a minute shorter. Uh, but anyway, this is the third thing. All the links as well for everything is always in the spreadsheet that's linked everywhere on my things and all of my things. Uh, but yes, anyway, beyond that, that is uh, that. That's it. That's it. Uh, for those watching the archive, I've begun the idea of doing a little buffer before the stream, so there's like 10 minutes at least or so of me baffing about reading some other things unrelated. That's never gonna make the recording. That's just a special little time for the streams, I suppose. Mm. Anyway, that's that. Uh, what else? What else do I have? Anything else? I don't think so. I want to uh, bring up. Uh, no, I believe I do not. I have done all the things, the things, things and things. Uh, but before we commence further with the story so far and everything else, we have, well, as always during the intermissions, I uh, have to read a little bit of a thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Formatting on that is weird. Anyway, I'm going to be reading a little short story I wrote. So, I fix the, the formatting on this. Somehow got fucked up. I don't know how. Weird. I don't like when it does that. But anyway. 
Okay, let's take this away. You go away. So we can warm up on the voices even more. Where are you? Where huh? 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 is it? Where are you? Where are you? No, that's the wrong one. What are you doing? Ah, what the? Why, why did you mess up? Why did you have to mess up now? Oh, come on now. Can you just give me the thing? There we go. Bloody hell. It's messing with me. That's weird. No respect to that. OBS don't... don't no, I probably should have multiple of those. Anyway. Anyway. Let's warm up with the short story. 14. A uh, very short one. Super short one, apparently. Another poem thingy. Uh, anyway, let's see what it is. Stinging flame. Break his heart and deliver unto me their final sorrow. Pity not the foolish, arrest that simple mind, and direct this strength to mountains unclaimed. O oh, forgotten winds, carry the blind beyond this mortal coil, into the land above. And in the end, my humble wish, unheard it shall go, for time is no more. Alright, another... I don't even know what to call this thing. Thing. It's a thing. Interpret it as you will. That's what poems are, I guess. I don't know what it means. Some kind of existential thing again, whatever. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, as always. Uh, but it is a reading thing. Now... Oh, alright, let's stay hydrated. That's very, very important. In order for me to be at least somewhat reasonable, I have to be at least somewhat hydrated. Uh, now, we continue with Natsuhiko Runabout. Uh, no. Natsuko is inside Watase's head and he's been committing crimes to that poor man. I mean, sure, Watase is terrorist and wants to kill people and stuff like that. And he's basically orchestrated the whole attack on the nuclear thing. So he's not guilty, uh, free of anything. That doesn't excuse Natsuhiko's crimes as well, though. Like, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> Now, uh, but yeah, basically that's it. We've basically just been a re, uh, recapping the story so far, just from Natsuko's perspective inside what does his mind so far. Got a little bit there. Still confused about what the hell Yuri is. Well, I have guesses that I expressed earlier. Uh, but that's it's been like three days, because... Uh, but only a few moments for you, uh, Archive of you were. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's just, let's just dive in, let's just dive in, let's not faff about more than we already have, uh, we don't, okay, so we don't need the chat log here unless there's actually something happening in the chat, I'll keep that off, that's, eh, there's no point to it, okay, nothing's happening, and now, anyway, uh, which part are we at, we ended with, alright, oh, Watase is about to go into the nuclear reactor, at least what he thinks, and try and sacrifice his life to save everyone. And then Natsuko is about to wake up. Alright. Alright. But just a while later, just do it like Tachibana and Moripa did. God damn it. God damn it. Hearing his voice, Natsuko passed out. Though Natsuko's consciousness was supposedly gone for good, he heard a voice. Well, it's not gone. Please, don't die. Oh yeah. And in his nearly faded consciousness, he rapidly began to regain sight. Yeah, you're being rescued. Or are you still watching it from the outside perspective? Oh, he's seeing his own dying body. He had no idea what was going on. Just that he was face to face with himself. Okay, so he's still inside Watase's. I did it! Interesting. With a sigh of relief, Watase held his hand up to Natsuhiko's mouth. He could feel a faint breath on his palm. I'm breathing? Natsuko blanked out for a few seconds, but the truth of the situation finally hit him. You mean, my body's still alive? Yes it is, congratulations. But how? How could I have survived with all those bullet wounds? That is a very good question, actually. How did he survive? It's been like 8 hours, 8 or 9 hours that he's had just been bleeding profusely here. Really? Yeah, well, hmm. No, more importantly, wasn't the nuclear reactor supposed to have melted down here? Ah, yeah, that's what we're going to find out properly soon. 
though, shouldn't that have killed me long ago as well? Then why? It's all fake. What the hell's going on? Am I dreaming? Oh, no, 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 no. But the sensations he felt through what us body were no doubt a reality. The stench of blood drifting in the air, the numbness of his skin, the intense headache. He could feel his entire body convulsing. It's, it's not a dream? Nope. Then what's going on with me now? As, yeah, did, did Watasa save me from the brink of death with CPR? Yes, he did, I guess. Natsuko's body was alive, and yet his consciousness was still inside Watasa, which in Natsuko's mind could only mean one thing. All right, let's hear it. I see, so maybe. What does it mean to you? At the climax of their fight, Natsuko destroyed Watasa's memory. But the Phantom Yuri said this back then. The apex of a communicator's journey. The ability beyond empathy. The power to connect minds rather than just brains. Indeed, the third ability of BC was not memory destruction. It was manipulation. It was the power to connect minds. When Natsuko destroyed Watasa's memories, their minds were connected. So basically, it's not that my BC is energy lingering inside Watasa. It's that our minds have been connected through BC this entire time. Regardless of whether Watasa was awake or knocked out, that would explain why Natsuko was, a Natsuhiko was able to interfere with Watasa's mind and memory. But the question still remained as to how he was still alive. If this really were a nuclear reactor area, then I definitely would have died ages ago. Which means there wasn't a nuclear reactor here. Uh -uh. Everyone's learning that now. But in that case, what the hell is this place? Just then, after he had finished resuscitating Natsuhiko, Watase discovered something. This is the gun you used. Watase picked up a pistol that was lying next to Natsuhiko. I guess that wasn't any. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, there were multiple guns. Right as Watase felt its heft. Worries. Yep. He, no, no damn person. I have to get away as far away as possible. And then shattered. What does the memory of back then started coming back? What the hell was that? Bewildered by the flashback, Watase stared at Natsuiko with gaping eyes. Oh crap. But immediately afterwards, Watase himself denied the memories that were trying to come back. No way. There's no way that's true. Yes, it is. Anyway, I've got to get into a safe place. But just as Watase thought this, Hello, Luis. Whoosh. He saw Luis rushing towards him, axe in hand. What does this and Luis's hectic scuffle began? Ah, uh, she lost ultimately. Luis attacked Watase with the axe. Watase took a swift kick to the temple. And well, yada yada yada. But he found an opening and tackled Luis with the force of a bullet. Indeed. Professional trained person. And straddled her. But that supposedly dominant position didn't last long. Louis struck Watase in the eyes, temporarily blinding him. Uh huh. Louis slipped her body out from under him. Crap, I've got to put some distance between us. Watase blindly reached out into the darkness and grabbed Louis by the clothes. Uh oh. Watase felt Louis lose her balance. I have to defeat her right here and now. Watase's mind filled with a serious sense of violence and looming danger. Natsuka quickly shouted at him Stop! Don't hurt her! And then he just, uh, you know, his uh, voice appeared to get through. Watas avoid hitting, avoided hitting Luis and instead slipped around behind her and choked her. Uh, unconscious, but she's fine. He applied pressure to Luis's neck, mindful of how much strength to use. Yes. Going, fading consciousness. Watas's sight soon came back. Natsuka could tell that Luis was passed out cold in Watas's grip. The sight of her chest slowly rising and falling made it appear her life was not in danger. Thank goodness. What has carried Natsuka and Luis as the boy sighed to himself. Hmm. And continuing his. As Watas left area N, he found Kazumi standing there. Ah, yes, their nonsensical plan to try and just get out. The two of them then carried Natsuka and Luis on over to the infirmary immediately. Once they finally arrived at the infirmary, Watas and Kazumi began Natsuko's blood transfusion. How's his condition? Think he can pull through? His respiration pulse are extremely feeble. 
but his vital signs are just barely stable. Ah, he'll be fine. I can't make any guesses as to how it'll turn out in the end, but I think he'll just pull through if we keep the transfusion going. Though Natsuko was relieved to hear Okazumi's words, he couldn't help but think. Still, how did I survive for so long in that state? Now that it had been established that there was no nuclear reactor in Area N, he understood that his body had not been affected by radiation. Natsuko had been inflicted with such serious wounds that put him at such obvious risk for death from blood loss. Could it possibly have something to do with how I've been connected with Watase through BC this entire time? Maybe body went to a comatose state or something? Huh. He had no other hunches. But he did remember what he learned in class a few days ago. Now that I think about it, when he practiced telepathy in the BC room, BC room, didn't Professor Tsubakiyama say... But the most important thing for BC is, without a doubt, concentration. Unlike the other five senses, you need concentration that transcends common sense if you want to draw out the sixth sense. It's said that the concentration necessary for BC use is so extreme that it can cause the five senses to dampen in turn. Yes, we've seen that happen a bunch of times with him. In certain cases, even vital signs like body temperature and pulse can drop. All right, there. Yeah, he went to a comatose state. A, uh, hibernation, almost. Once you reach that state of concentration, a new power will awaken in your brain, opening the door to the world of BC. I see. I get it now. Indeed. When using BC, depending on the situation, the five senses can dampen and vital signs like breathing and pulse can decrease. All the answers were there. Ever since I lost consciousness back then, I've been connected to Watase through BC. So in other words, my brain's been concentrating this entire time for the continuous use of BC because you got nothing else to do. And as a result, my body's respiration and pulse have decreased dramatically. When Natsuko had used long distance telepathy on Mashiro, his face had gone pale. Use of BC's third ability likely required even more extreme concentration from the brain. Enough to cause the body to go into hibernation. I see. So that's how my body was able to minimize blood loss, despite being shot by Watase so many times. By the time Natsuko finally reached that conclusion, a sound rang out from behind Watase. Hello. Hello, Okita. Watase turned around and found Okita standing in the doorway to the infirmary, gun in hand. Well, well, well. If it isn't Captain Kasasagi and Lieutenant Tachibana. I thought I heard noises coming from here. What might you two be up to? A series of events beyond Natsuko's imagination unfurled. Go ahead and laugh. I know it's fragile justice, but it's my choice. If killing you means I'll put an end to all of this, then I'll do what I must. Even if it means staining my hands in sin for the first and last time in my life. Well, you know it's the last time. Mr. Okita sorting or resorting to coercive tactics to put the blame on Watase. Your mission ends here. Die, traitor! <laughs> Captain, look out! And she gets shot. Right? But I will ensure that you get your just desserts. Mark my words. The villainous voice. No, it's hard. Mr. Rukita, if he's calling Watasa a traitor, then does that mean Mr. Rukita really was the sleeper agent after all? No? What? Oh, right, that idea. I don't think so. But why? I wanted to trust him. There's other things going on. Anyway, we need to get out of here as quickly as possible. Now that the old man knows we're here, this place is no longer safe. And Teach is in trouble too. Professor Tsubakiyama's gone? Who the hell did this? How'd they even break the door in the first place? What the hell happened here? Did somebody take Professor Tsubakiyama away? I think she just ran away herself. I have a bad feeling about this. God damn, they, saying, they said the words. Let's get out of here. We need to find a safe place. I mean, this, it, this, whole, this entire scenario has been a bad feeling from the start. Uh, please, please be safe, Professor. As Watas and Kazumi ran aimlessly, they reached the connecting passageway to Area 1. And waiting for them there was... Hello, Jun. <laughs> Love this bit every time. Where the hell is that bastard? I see, so that really was it all along. Then I have no choice. I gotta do it, or I can't protect anyone. I gotta kill that son of a bitch. Why is June bleeding from the head? 
And what's she doing with that engine cutter? Come on, she just said she's gonna kill somebody. And yeah, why is she ble- Oh yeah, she got- I guess she got grazed by a bullet or something. As they ran away from June, Kazumi muttered in blank amazement. And why did things turn out this way? Cause it's a mess. We're being chased by our squad mate and people we were swore to we swore to rescue. And we have no place to run. Those words gave Natsuko some food for thought. That's strange. Mr. Kita was like that too. But I had never expected... I would have never expected Jun to act that way no matter how suspicious Watasa acted. And what's with those two? It's like they're the same as Watasa was back then. What's going on here? How the hell can we survive in this mess? It is a mess. But then Watasa spoke. Don't give up. We're still alive, and there's steep. There's still people we need to save. So fight on until the bitter end. If you want to give up, you can do that later. That's a speech. Those words encourage not to because consciousness. Ye, a rousing speech. If you want to give up, do it later. First, we gotta do stuff. That's great. That's good. Soon enough, they headed to the engine room in search of their last sliver of hope, where they found Balia, basically. WX Particle Amplify Operation Manual. This is it. WX Particle Amplify um, Operation Manual introduction. This document is in such a manual for WX Particle Amplify due to the fact that there is great danger involved in this operation. Please read the manual carefully before you proceed. Furthermore, the, propriet, the properties of WX Particles have extremely harmful effects to the body. Examples of this, of this include dysesthesia, dysesthesia, brain dysfunctions. Okay, what is dysesthesia? I need to actually look that up. I never looked it up previously. Uh, that's a mistake on my part. Uh, so, uh, this says this here. What the hell is that? This aesthesia means abnormal sensation. It's usually a painful burning, prickling, or aching feeling. You typically get it in your legs or feet. But you also can have it in your arms. Sometimes the pain feels like you're being squeezed around your chest or your abdomen. Okay, I think I felt something like that uh, on occasion. Sure. Uh, anyway, brain dysfunctions, genetic abnormalities, etc. The symptoms are dependent on the level of particle energy as listed below. Without AD, 0 to 2000, no effects. 2000 to 4000, dysesthesia, nausea, headaches, genetic abnormalities. 4 to 8000, brain dysfunctions, faint consciousness. 8000, unconsciousness. The intensity and probability of displaying the aforementioned symptoms vary depending on the energy levels. With AD 0 to 6,000, no effects. 6 to 8, dysesthesia, nausea, headaches, genetic abnormalities. 8 to 12,000, brain dysfunctions, faint consciousness. 12,000 up plus, unconscious. AD adds up to 4,000 MSV of protection, hence the increased levels. When using the amplifier normally, the particle energy levels should not exceed 2,000. When used for advanced experiments, the particle energy levels should not exceed 4,000. Hmm. Doesn't WX particle amplifier refer to that machine in area N? Yes, there are six of them even. And does that mean it's not the radiation spreading through lava, but these WX particles instead? Yes! Various doubts welled up within Natsuhiko's consciousness, but Watase was focused on finding something else. I don't see anything in here about coolant. This is it. So this really is our only way out. Ah, but not really. It turns out, no, it's not. Stop the coolant device, go through the drainage pipe to connect, to contact the outside, and lead our rescue squad team back in. That was the plan Watasa had thought of to save everyone. He then gathered all the necessary tools and swam in the pipe by himself to seek help. However... <laughs> Aelia... Captain? You're back girl already? I'm sorry. There was an obstruction in the pipe. I couldn't even make it to Lake Rokume. <laughs> oh no. His plan resulted in failure. Damn it! just when I finally thought we had a glimmer of hope. Let's try starting all over from the beginning. There's literally nothing else to begin with though. We'll think of a way to open the bulkhead by Area 2's emergency staircase. Not an option, not really. And then, power goes out, emergency power. Luis wakes up. Confrontation. Soon I had they reached the bulkhead that did, then did all of Labo switch from main energy power. And at that moment, opportunity. Luis woke up and bared her fangs at Kazumi. Uh-oh. Release Natsuhiko, or else I'll choke this woman to death. She wouldn't kill someone, would she? I don't think so. Louise! Stop it, Louise! We're just trying to save you guys. Why can't you understand that? What does a frantically try to talk some sense into the bloodthirsty Louise? 
but she just gave him a pointed glare. I thought I told you to stop telling such transparent lies. You think you can trick me after you shot Natsuko? Wait, what did you say? You didn't know, woman? You're lying, right? The captain would never do anything like that, right? What does a gasp with Nakazumi's words? And at that moment, memories. The memories of back then flickered inside Watase's head once more. Perhaps at this rate, Watase might regain his memories. What do I do? Go back to my body and try to persuade Luis? Wait, but would it be safe to suddenly return to my body when it's barely recovered from the brink of death? Probably not. But you will in a few minutes anyway. If my body's condition suddenly worsens once it gets out of hibernation. As Natsuko hesitated, Luis addressed Kazumi. Take a close look at what's in that man's pocket. A gun. She was of course referring to the gun that Watase had picked up in Area N. That gun probably belonged to this man to begin with. Correct? Actually. He used it to shoot Natsuko. Right when Luis said that, Kazumi violently shook her off. I said stop, and this is where Kazumi loses her mind as well. Uh oh. Luis's body flew through the air. Uh oh. All Natsuko could do was watch the whole thing from, from beginning to end. Luis proceeded to tumble down the staircase. Like, it's fine, she's 13 years old, she's like made of her bones and body's made of magic. He'll recover, he'll be fine. She finally stopped at the landing of the stairs at B1. She wasn't budging an inch. Like, fine, she might be a little unconscious, but. She's, she's not bad. Luis! Watasa frantically ran over to Luis and checked her condition. Her life wasn't in danger, but she appeared to be completely knocked out. Damn it, if only I hadn't hesitated to go back to my body. As Natsuko wallowed in regret for not trying to persuade Luis sooner, Kazumi descended the steps with unsteady feet. Captain, is she? It's okay, she's just passed out. I see. Kazumi's body shook as she spoke. Something was off about her. Kazumi looked at Watasa and spoke. Captain, may I ask you just one question? Uh oh, this is the turning point for her as well. What is it? This mystery has been on my mind for a long time. Captain, why was it that you went down to the basement at 6.42am, shortly after this accident occurred? Or this is the fake memory Natsuko put in there. He just made up a number. He just made up the... That, I told you guys, that's because Dojima and Hima called for me on the radio. So what you're saying is that your radio could receive transmissions then, correct? But, but you know, I personally tried to reach you on your radio just a few minutes before that. 6.42 AM. That was one of the memories Natsuko casually bestowed upon Motase when falsifying his memories. Yeah, good job. Again, fucking brilliant kid. As Mr. Tachibun have been doubting Motase this entire time, yep, it's your fault. Good job. For sake. God damn, teenagers don't solve anything. God damn it. It's not to cause fault all this bullshit's happening, well, from, well partially. Okay, Watasa and his colleagues uh, uh, made the whole incident here, but not to cause making things worse. He has done nothing but make things worse, generally speaking. That doubt wasn't unwarranted. The loss and imperfect recovery of memory, hallucinations, falsehoods, a pistol. Watasa could answer none of these lingering questions of hers, half of which are not his fault. Watase was extremely suspicious, but for Kazumi to have followed him this far was probably a testament to just how much she trusted him. But that last thing Luis said must have been a breaking point. You think you can trick me after you shot Natsuko? That last statement must have been enough to shatter Kazumi's trust. Yeah, I, I tried as hard as I could to trust you. Aww, she did. She's a good people. I've trusted you for as long as I can remember. But... Tachibana? I just can't do it, Watase. If what Miss Sanami has said was true, then everything fits. When I think of this facility's true nature and the past you, I realize that there's only one answer. What's going on? At that moment, Natsuko felt an intense uneasiness. He could understand why Kazumi would doubt Watase, but the extent of her doubt was blatantly abnormal. If you are a murderer, we actually don't know if Watase has ever actually killed someone. He's planned to, and he wants to. Well, wanted to before his memories, but we don't know if he did. Then the least I can do is preserve your good name. As Kazumi kept muttering incomprehensibly, she reached out for a nearby fire extinguisher. You went down the wrong path, Watase. 
Now it's time for you to receive your punishment for that choice. And a second later, swing. Crazy face as well. Kazmi swung the fire extinguisher horizontally, but Watase quickly blocked it with his arm. Hmm. Actually, now that Natsuka has implied that this is, their reactions are abnormal, I guess they kind of are. Uh, I mean, it's a tense and stressful situation. There's lots of doubt and suspicion and stuff that's not really fitting the reality that they know of, so... Mm. Maybe they... I mean, there is... We, there are psychic, like, ghost children here. At least one of them. And then there was the whole thing with, like, whoever trapped uh, Watas and Anna in the staircase. Like, who did that? Uh, or how, what, why? That's un unexplained as well. Like, there's lots of things that are unexplained. Anyway, stop. Why are you doing this? Watase. I'm so sorry, Watase. This is the only thing I can do for you now. Oh, crazy eyes. Yeah, gone crazy. Been possessed by a ghost. Or like memories have been implanted or like something like that. Manipulated. Probably. Probably. We got psychic children. That's the main plot of this story. So why not? With one look into her eyes, Natsuhiko was convinced. Same eyes. She's the same. She's the same as Mr. Rukita and June. They got crazy. At that moment, Watase quickly thrust Nakazumi away. Oh. She fell on the scared staircase with the fire extinguisher still in hand. Watase took that opportunity to carry Natsuko's body down to the second basement level and rush out of the stairwell. And what the hell's going on? Thoughts raced through Natsuko as Watase shouted that. What in the world's going on? Why is everyone acting crazy all of a sudden, even in Miss Tachibana? Something suspicious was happening, but Natsuko didn't know what. Yeah, okay, how, so how, where does Anna come into this whole plot thing then? What is she doing? What's her secrets? She, like, because she's just suddenly gone from the place she was uh, put in. Uh, anyway, by the time he reached Erien, Montasa was already tattered and beaten. Oh, good sign. Kazumi had struck him in the eye with a fire extinguisher. Jun appeared and he had to run away. Yukita shot him in the flank. And once he finally arrived in Erien, what was waiting for him was, plus also like nine hours running around with no food, and like only, or like a very small amount of water and whatnot. Speaking of water, drink your water. Always drink your water. And the uh, assault of these were WX particles. Abnormal symptoms including skin discomfort, headache, and convulsing fingertips. No, what does it's too dangerous here? The manual they had found in the engine room even had this to say. 8000 MSV, unconsciousness. The contamination level in area N was far beyond that. If the contamination is level that high, then the device inside here really must be that WX particle amplifier. Is this device the reason the facility's MSV values have been increasing? Yes. Once Natsuko was convinced of that connection, a sudden realization hit him. AD, Procyon, Contamination Zone, WX Particle, Amplifier, WX Particle, BC's third ability. The scattered puzzle pieces inside of Natsuko are rapidly connected into one. Uh, he's realized something. Not exactly sure. I got it, I've solved one of the mysteries. Care to share? The answer he finally found was that the true nature of the facility. I've been connected to Watase for six hours using BC's third ability. But whenever he administered AD, the connection would halt. And when he entered the contaminated zone, it would resume. Oh, the thing we already knew, kind of. So in other words, the AD that Lava made is a drug that inhibits my BC abilities. Yeah, so I think we figured this out during the first route at some point. Yeah, basically when I saw alone desire. Anyway, anyway, good job, Natsuko. You are figuring this out now. The WX particles spreading around Lava have the opposite effect as AD. They augment my BC abilities. Okay, okay, this I did not realize. I did not really understand this bit. Good, that's actual new information. Thank you, Natsuko. And the center of the high security level was a WX particle amplifier. And the Procyon, the device that measured the WX particles, was built by Labo as well. The Procyon, the AD, WX particles, everything relates to BC. Which means, which means Labo. Labo Z. Rokumei C7 does. Number one. Labo does not conduct nuclear power research. They research arms production and other dangerous national matters. Well, they don't research nuclear power, that's for certain. That uh, um, wondrous mystery. That's correct. Labo does not conduct nu nuclear research. Other dangerous national matters, indeed. So Labo really isn't a nuclear power research lab at all. Yay, we knew that.
But anyway, good job. It's a facility for researching WX particles and PC abilities. And your mother's is, and your mom's the uh, center of research of all of this stuff. Natsuka finally arrived at that truth. And at that very same moment, hello Kazumi. Kazumi appeared on the other side of the still open gate. The fire extinguisher was still in her hands. It's just a fire extinguisher. It's a blunt object. It's not that dangerous. <gasps> what does a panic and operated the terminal? It's not really designed to be used as a weapon. I mean, everything can be used as a weapon, but it's not the most practical thing. It's kind of heavy and cumbersome. And like, you know, not that practical. Engine cutter, it's also probably really fucking heavy, gotta be honest. Because like, it's designed to cut through, you know, reinforced steel and concrete and stuff like that for rescue operations. I mean, it has to be that strong. And so it needs to be, have a very, very, you know, uh, solid and fairly thick diamond tipped uh, blade there. Plus an engine that can actually run it through all those, that matter. Like, saw blades require a lot of power, like proper, like motor that can run it and not get stuck is powerful and requires quite a bit you know it's fairly heavy fairly heavy well you know, it's designed for... anyway anyway what does the panic and operated the terminal the gate quickly began to close but before it could finish kazumi slipped through ow dunk on the head again and swung the fire extinguisher doubt right onto watase's head sparks filled his vision and his body shook left and right but watase mustered the last of his strength Yee! And pushed Kazumi right out of area in. Bye bye, Kazumi. Watase! Watase, open the gate, Watase! Kazumi's voice drowned out behind the gate. And at the same time, Watase crumbled down, sending Natsuko's body flinging off him. Oh. As Watase's consciousness faded, several questions flickered in his mind. Why did he lose his memory? That's Natsuko's fault. Why were the nine of them locked inside the facility? Because super secret research and, you know, can't let this kind of stuff out. Uh, policies. Why did that survivor keep running away from him? Because, yeah, because, you, you know, you're, you're the terrorist. That's why. And your memory's body erased. And she, shot, so, and she saw you shoot her friend. Why was there no fire like no nuclear reactor in Area N, but rather Natsuko on the brink of death instead? Because it's secret. Uh, research facility. And why did Yuri's body disappear? It's a fake memory. Again, Natsuko's fault. <laughs> Several answers to those questions lay within Natsuko. Yeah, good job, kid. The amnesia and the contradictory memories were caused by Natsuko's abilities. Yeah. I hope he's gonna come to terms with that. Like, that was not a good idea. My power should have, should, shouldn't do that. The reason Luis ran away from Matasa was obviously because he was a terrorist. The reason Yuri ran away was probably the same. Yeah, she didn't know that, though. And the reason why there were no Pyrex nuclear, uh, nuclear reactor in area was because the facility researched WX particles and BC. But even Natsuko had six lingering questions of his own that he could not solve. Mm -hmm. Who conducted the murders inside Labo? Yes. Correct. That is also one of my questions. Let's see. Let's see. Will I have other questions that you do not have? Who was the girl killed in front of the cargo lift? She was someone who was born here. But that's about as much as I can gather. Who was the girl called Yuri, who looked exactly like the Yuri Hino? Well, that, we know the answer to that. She's like the uh, the thing. The information condensed into a single thing that gains consciousness. That's what she is. Who took away the stockpile of AD? Oh yeah, who locked it? What does an Enna in the thing? That's a good question. Where did Enna go? It's also an excellent question. But what he understood was, the least was, why that people going crazy? Why did those three people go mad one by one? I mean, that one, sure, I guess that's a good question, but like, uh, basic logic and common sense says stressful situation, paranoia, although it is actually, uh, now that he brings up, it really is a bit too drastic of a turn. So yeah, someone else is using B mm, BC to fuck around. He thought he heard someone whisper, try to remember. It felt like a voice arising up from Natsuko's heart of hearts. Believe in the heart of them. That's right. Try to remember. The answer has to be in something I've seen so far. Plenty of things. The answer to the unsolved mystery. With that thought in mind, Natsuko recalled Yorkami City's seven wonders. Number number wonder number five. If a communicator uses BC without knowing the proper way, they will eventually turn into a mind-broken monster. 
num the number six monster fight uh, people are captured by a secret task force working under the city security department and are imprisoned underground oh all right i forgot this rumor yeah that might actually be what's happening yeah yeah seems reasonable on the number seven if a communicate excessively misuses bc their target's mind will eventually break oh hmm oh so someone's been using bc on those three the whole time or like maybe just the consequence of the wx particles doing something maybe natsuka couldn't understand why he was suddenly reminded of those words these wonders however if all of those are true then if there wasn't a monster locked on the ground here causing now if there is a monster locked on the ground here causing everyone's minds to go crazy then not a monster person not gonna let you off that hook as well it was too out there to call it a theory it was nothing more than a simple guess but Natsuko thought I don't know if monsters like that exist they do not I don't know who's at fault here uh, probably like a government defense contractor probably or no your mother that's what it's that fault actually here but I, that might actually that's not even a joke that's legitimately it's your mom's fault not so you got it's your mom's fault to a degree I don't know what the hell is going on here he knew that he couldn't let it end like this and it's not going to end no we're only just beginning there was no way he could leave the, well okay not the beginning but we are finally caught up with all you know the current timeline we are actually going into the present now there was no way he could leave things as is without understanding a thing then i will investigate i will find out exactly what's going on here Ye. i can't leave everything to atas anymore i can't remain a mere spectator good cooperation yeah this is different i thought back in the after days awakening and ending i thought tatsuko was gonna be like ah he sounds like so mean like he's gonna fight but no 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 they're gonna cooperate they have to because like they're the only two sane ones <laughs> well sort of. i'm throwing down the gauntlet if the two of us work together we can do this yeah fuck yeah oh fuck yeah the moment he made his brave decision natsuko's consciousness returned to his body <laughs> fuck yeah we're getting to completely new territory we are done with recapping everything. We are done with the things we know, we've seen. Everything else following this is completely new. Yeah. But yes, 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 yes. His own five senses returned. His sight, his hearing, his touch, his smell, his taste, and his pain all awoke inside his body. Yeah, we could really do this without the pain being so much. Ow, you got shot four times. You've been unconscious for like nine hours. <laughs> Knock. Ah. Uh, yeah, not a good time to wake up. And immediately afterwards, he felt a burning pain singe through his bullet wounds. It was genuine pain that he had to grit his teeth to bear. Ow. But Natsuko bore the pain nonetheless. He focused all the strength he could muster into his heavy limbs. And slowly but surely, he stood up. The blood transfusion needle fell out, but he paid no heed to that. And stepped up to Watase. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. yeah, Watas is also pretty beat up. When he heard Natsuko's footsteps, Watas peeled his heavy eyes open. Get up. None of this is over yet. Six towering devices stood in the vast area and, as they made their mechanical whirring sounds, an intense, resolute voice shook the cool air. You and I will save everyone from this nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, hell the fuck yeah. <laughs> hell the fuck yeah. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> All right. I do know because when I uh, failed to get the proper ending during the after days route, I looked up the guide and stuff like that. And uh, I know that there is a fourth route, the D route here. Uh, the C route was bit, yeah. The route C, current, is simply just a recap. The route D, the extended edition bit, is where the real thing happens. Where the story is actually going to conclude. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. Mm, okay.
I'm gonna continue. But I'm thinking how am I gonna split this up? Because I kinda have to split this up, I feel like. I mean not the stream, but the recording. Hmm. 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 Or I or I might just keep coming. It's not late. It's only like not even 2 p.m. right now. It's a Saturday. I think I might just straight up continue until we conclude this today. One mega session. That I will... No, fuck that. If I conclude it, then I'll just conclude it. And I'll just upload two parts. For the archive. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Anyway, the credits. But there's gonna be a post-credits scene. Or continuation, as has been the case for all the previous ones. Uh, anyway, let's, let's enjoy the credits this time properly and not accidentally click on the screen that will just stop it because it's just, yeah, it's weird. It's still odd how it does this, that the credits are just a video they made and they just overlay the game footage. So if I just go to the thing, the gameplay thing, there it's nothing. The game is empty. This is like just, uh, this is the version of capturing the actual, you know, the full display instead that's how i have to do this actually see the credits in there they're little cutscenes and stuff like that so otherwise it doesn't work but yes anyway natsuki and matasa working together there's a lot of stuff to uh, confront with they're, they're gonna have to deal with what i said regaining his memories and those two personalities clashing like the personality of the, these past like nine hours that he gained and created versus the one of the past what was the accident where, like, that triggered him to become super violent? Like, what happened there? With that, you know, his, like, uh, the light of his life dying in the thing? What was that about? Like, what's that about? That has to be confronted. We are not done. None of it. Nothing has been concluded. What other questions? Yes, I mean, yeah, Natsuko laid out the other questions. What's Yuri? Who's that dead girl? Is she actually dead even? Mm, who knows? Who knows? Lots of things. Lots of lots of lots of things to still figure out. But yes, quality assurance words we cannot understand. I cannot read any of this. Uh, all I know is that this is Japanese thing. Hey, there's words. But physics. Nah. You can read them at your own leisure and will. But yes. Now. What else? else yeah i think we'll just leave it there look at the fancy little credits sparks flying upwards and not we'll take a sip of water as well as i prepare for the upcoming oh, no, no so on. hmm current route was what only like an hour and a half or something like that no wait i spent two hours previously so about two hours long because like i mean half an hour was me just rambling and recapping my own way and stuff like that and today was like a bunch of, uh, not really that long, like half an hour of actual stuff. Yeah, okay. So if I wasn't interrupting myself constantly, uh, this uh, series of our footage entirely would be what, like 35, 40 hours long at most, I think. I think, something like that. Instead, we're up to like 55 or maybe close to 60 now. Something like that. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, you. Anyway, let's get back to it. Get back to the actual thing. Get back to the story for me, game. You're not over. You're not going to dump it to the main screen. There we go. You didn't. Epilogue. Prologue. Decide. It's the prologue of the epilogue. Come on. All right. All right, then. In Labo's basement floors, you're not getting away, you damn traitor. I will ensure that you get your just desserts. Hello, Kita. A man spat out the repeated words of resentment. Uh, oh yeah, hello. Sacrifice your life. Why? Because he wants to save people. And uh, what's been going on with you? A woman wandered around in search of another man. I gotta kill him. I gotta do it. A young rescue worker hardened her heart with a murderous intent. Yes, I understand. I'm the only one who can save him after all. Skilled rescue worker exchanged words with someone. Oh, that's the that's the silhouette of the girl who died, isn't it? The hair matches at the very least. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> so she's a ghost as well, like Yuri. Hello, Luis. You woke up. A girl who had fainted got up with vacant eyes. Natsuhika, Mashiro's still there as well. And the girl called out the boy's name. Still stuck in the elevator, which didn't go up to the thing. But not a single one of the nine noticed that further underground, inside the cage constructed beneath their feet, oh, the final bomb full of malice was lying, hiding in wait for the. F wait, 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 stop it. No, 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 no. Wait, dude, what? I can't read this, but what the hell? Yuri is actually alive and like trapped in what? 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 Okay, no, like. Don't do auto text. I can't read that quickly. Damn it, you, you bastards. I have. To, mm. Anyway. But not a single one of the nine noticed that further underground, inside the cage constructed beneath their feet, the final bomb full of malice was lying, hiding in wait for its time to come. Someone just straddled in a super like Hannibal Lecter type thing. And as if time were repeating itself, the girl who supposedly died nine years ago slowly awoke. Right. So, is there actually time? Like, oh man, I thought we would. I thought I got dispelled of the idea of time travel and it was just memory rewinding, but what? Uh, where am I? Okay. <laughs> she soon remembered what had happened to her and why she had been asleep there. Hikori. Her voice trembled in the darkness. Hikori. Save me. Okay, oh my. It's happening. What? What? There were three more hours until the lockdown was lifted. Her wish would soon pass through the darkness. Current. And. What? Oh my. Okay. Um. And did that. Preview continued over continuation of route to double. You're just throwing bombshells on me. Only three hours left. The boy rises to solve all the mysteries. His body heavily wounded. Awake, a voice calls. Hello, I think that's guys of me talking. To the collapsed man once again. In that utterly chaotic situation, the two of them decide to join force. So Yuri's been alive the whole fucking time. What the? The boy's awake in true power. Or at least she was. The man's memories are resurrected at last. Oh, as he confronted those, the nine trapped souls on known past. <laughs> and the unveiled face of their true enemy. What is the true form of the monster that warped their fates? Person. Person. Not gonna let you get away with that. As nine convictions inter intersect in the darkness, they will be faced with a fated choice once more. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Uh, oh my god. Double. Read double. Would you destroy everything for the sake of someone else? Or would you kill someone for the sake of everything else? Those are some heavy questions <laughs> to ask to the next route. <gasps> double unlocked. A new scenario has been added to the route select menu. You unlocked answers mode. What? I want answers mode. There was nothing there. I was looking answer during SSN, but you could just but but there was not. There was no choice. There was no enigram. The enigram didn't appear there. Okay, so um, uh, right. That's a thing. Uh, okay. I guess we'll... I do have to separate the parts, I suppose. Probably because the, the structure needs to be followed. But yeah, okay. Um, we can do this quickly now. Uh, <laughs> we can do this efficient. This is like, this is what the intermissions were designed for. Very, very initially before I decided that I can't do like a six or seven hour the stream once a week i'll rather do like two three or four like two hours one hour and a half or something like that several times a week instead uh but anyway uh okay all right uh, i'm not gonna stop the stream that can keep going uh but we will stop the recording in a moment there we go bye bye the inter all right our music which one did i put up yes intermission oh this one has all brackets everywhere <laughs> <laughs> was that Taku Iwasaki Master from George's Brothers? That's a great series. Uh, another one, oh, another one from Garrod. Huh. Garrod, the assignment. I think that one should be correct. Well, another one from Valhalla. Noriyuki Asakura, theme of the dark side of your heart. From Samurai X, apparently. I have no idea where I found it originally or how. Again, I always find music just something random. Sam Hutton and Joe Collinson, Judgment from Bullets Per Minute. 
never played that game. And again, I just found music somehow and just added to my collection, ever expanding collection. And Shonen no Kaze and Yasutaka Nakata, Ichibanka, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Also a game I haven't played, but that's, eh, that's a fucking great song. Fucking fantastic. Do love the Yakuza series though. Watch each other's uh, fantastic fucking in like <laughs> the scenes where they just sit around and just stare at each other and talk about business and whatnot. It's like the most intense and hardcore stuff out there. It's like just like fuck you like Halo, like just blockbuster action scenes with explosions, stuff like that. Give me that. Give me that more more intense dialogue. That's the best stuff out there, honestly. Like, ah, uh, okay, right. So, uh, temporarily, but I guess, I guess I will use this moment. I've been hydrating myself a bit, so I will see you in a moment. And I'll actually be taking a legit pause in the stream for once to refill my waters and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, Baba for a few seconds, and I will see you in literally, actually, this time for real in just a few moments. There won't be, you know, several hours or days in between uh, the parts. Anyway, ta-ta for a moment. <laughs> 